It's your blood that cleanses me. Oh, it's your blood that gave me your life. It's your blood that. 
Thank you. 
is your love, your love for me. Great is your love, your love for me. Great is your love, your love for me. Great is your love, your love for me. How glorious, how wonderful, hallelujah. This love of God wherewith he loved us so. Oh. <laughs> this love, oh God, wherewith you loved us so. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed is your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Take my life, oh God. Take my life right now, oh Lord Jesus, and let it be. Take my life and let it be. Consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Lord, let them in ceaseless praise. Take my will and make it thine. It shall be no longer mine. It shall be no longer mine. Take my heart it is your own. Oh, it shall be your royal throne. Lord, it shall be your Lord Jesus, we adore you. Lord Jesus, we adore you. No, come, let us adore again. Oh, Lord, we come now to adore you. Lord, we come right now to adore you. Christ the Lord. You reign as king forever. You reign as king forever. You <laughs> Woo Forever I'll adore you, Lord, forever I'll adore you, Lord, forever.
Christ, my Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mighty God, everlasting King, Counselor, oh, Counselor, wonderful, wonderful. I believe that's a word that should be completely and totally dedicated to who the living God Christ Jesus is. I think he's the only one that should be called wonderful from now on. His name is Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, uh, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we bless and praise your name. Lord, our God, our King. Lord, we bless and praise your name. 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 <laughs> Lord, we bless and praise your name. Lord, we bless and praise your name. Lord, we bless and praise your name. The name of Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah, Counselor. Prince of Peace. Mighty God, everlasting Father. Hallelujah, from the rising of the sun 
until the setting of the sun. Your name will be praised in all the earth, oh God. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun, your name will be praised, oh God, in all the earth, oh God. Your name will be adored among your people, oh God. Your name will be highly exalted, oh God. Your name above every name. The name above every name. The name above every name. The name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene. The name above every name. The name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene. God and Lord forever. God and Christ the King. God and Lord forever. Forever I will sing. I'll sing of your great love for me. I'll sing of your great love for us. I'll sing of your great mercy. We'll sing of your great kindnesses. We'll sing of you. Forever we will worship Christ the King. Forever we will shout and sing. Forever we will worship Christ the King. Forever we will shout and sing. Forever we will worship Christ the King, Christ the King, Christ the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Forever we will shout and sing. Forever we will worship Christ the King. Jesus Christ the Lord Forever we will shout and say Forever we will worship Christ the King Forever we will shout and say
bless the Lord. the sound of the voice of the Lord the mountains will shake the hearts of men will melt 
nations and kings will bow before him. They will bring him their treasures. They will bring him their special and precious things. To worship Christ, the King God. To worship Christ, the King of Kings. I worship you. You know, songwriters, they'll ask us, well, where does that come from? I try to tell them, I try to explain it. You just, all you got to do is go, and then a song comes. The same song of the Spirit produces a song of the Spirit that can be understood, and a praise then begins to rise up from the church and ascend into the realms of God's divine grace and glory and presence. And something begins to happen in the atmosphere of the earth, in the atmosphere of the lives of God's people. Because when the praises go up, <laughs> the glory comes down. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Oh, I will praise you. I will praise you. I will praise the Lamb for sinners slain. And I will give him glory among the nations. Watch. I will give him glory among the nations. So will you, for his blood has washed away my sins. So I will praise him, Lord. For your blood, for your blood has washed away everything that separated me from you, my sin. <laughs> Hallelujah. Watch the healing power of God at work right now. Watch miracle power of God. Go to work right now wherever you may need that working love and grace. Right here in the midst of his praises, in the midst of his people, he is the well-named. 
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Lord Jesus, we worship you. Hallelujah. 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 You know, if there's anything we want to teach God's people and model for them is how to just go into a secret place in a public gathering <laughs> and worship right out of the realms of the Holy Ghost and worship right out of the realms of the empowerment that God gives. Because if you can learn to do that, if you can learn to yield to the Holy Ghost in such a way, in such a truth, this, the, all the rest of that which God wants to do in the midst of his church will begin to happen through your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times, and His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will bless the Lord at all times, and His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will bless the Lord at all times, and His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Say it with me. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will make my boast in you, Lord. And the humble shall hear thereof and begin to rejoice. I shall make my boast in you, Lord. And the humble shall hear the sound of it and begin to rejoice. Hallelujah. 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 I shall make my boast in the Lord. And the humble shall hear the sound of it and begin to rejoice. The trees shall clap their hands. The mountains shall dance and leave at the sound of this heavenly praise. I shall make my boast in you, Lord. I need you. I shall make my boast in you. I shall make my boast in you. To make my boast in you. Oh, ya la la ye. Oh, ya la la ye. Oh, la ya la la ye. Oh, la ya la la ye. Oh, la la ya ya ye. Oh, la ya ya ye. Oh, la ya ya ye. We shall make our boast in you, Lord. We shall make our boast in you. I shall bless the Lord at all times. And His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. I shall bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. 
Thank you, Jesus, for the anointing. Thank you, Jesus, for your anointing that heals and saves and delivers. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I shall make my boast in thee. We shall make our boast in thee. Hallelujah. The anointing's all over you. The presence of Jesus is all over you. Father, thank you for the anointing. There's the fire of God. That's the presence of Jesus. That's the healing anointing of heaven. Whatever you need is yours right now. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Savior, you live. Savior, you live. Blessed is your name. Blessed is your name. Well, I, I really, I believe that there has to come a fresh wind of heaven, a fresh moving of the Spirit and the people of, of God if there's going to be once again the special gifts raised up in the midst of His church so we can see another great outpouring of Holy Ghost conviction. There has to be a people of God that will go all the way with them and cooperate with them. Because I'm telling you, you listen to me. Those of you that are here right now watching by the web or YouTube, too much merchandising has been made of Jesus. There's too many models of how to have success among men. Too much cooperation with the world. It's time that all God's people get raptured back up in heaven, get caught back away with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. You know, it, we, get, we, have to see, we have to see people of prayer rise again. We have to see the intercessors we have to see the intercessors re return to the church. The, those people that we saw in the church when I was a little guy. Those people who got caught away and they were, such, they were so captivated by the presence of the Lord. First of all, they lived holy and pure lives. And so their prayer and their offerings were born out of something pure. God captivated their hearts and would take them to the place of praying all night. And they're living for interceding for the things that God is doing in the midst, wants to do in the midst of his people. You know, one of the things I learned about fasting and prayer is it has a lot to do with bringing your will under control. When food and hunger is gnawing at you, and you say, no. I'm seeking the Lord. Suddenly that begins to translate and to equate over into when other things and other issues and other thoughts and other trials and tri temptations are gnawing at you. No, I'm, I'm serving the Lord. So once again, we, we just believe in God for you to respond because I don't know of anybody else. I, that I don't know of anybody else personally that is that God the Holy Ghost is speaking so passionately through me too. God is addressing you on this place. Is it going to cost you something? Yeah, Jesus said, if you want to follow me, you must deny yourself. It's going to cause that's going to be painful because most people have lived their whole life serving themselves. That's all they know. That's what's comfortable. That's what feels good. That's what seems to be meaningful. Jesus says, you got to deny yourself. If God's people are going to learn something, they're going to learn that. Because that's principle number one. To take up our cross and follow him. He endured the cross. He made the cross very specific. Losing your life to live the life the Father has for us. Jesus modeled it. The cross and doing the will of the Father is equivalent. Jesus didn't come to live out his own life. He stood up in the midst of the people of Israel 
to be examined as they had examined the offering for 1,400 years. To be seen spotless, perfect offering. To see that it was that which was acceptable unto the Father. To see the manifestation of the spirit of holiness and power. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus did that all for you and me so that you and I could stand here in the midst of his glorious church, which is absolutely equivalent to him. Because he made it so. It is his body. He's amazing God with his mercy. So that we could be as he is. Middle of the road won't do. Half measures won't work. It'll just turn your heart sour. Ah, but when you touch heaven, <laughs> it is heavenly. And you don't want to be anywhere else. And that's why, you know, we had all those dear women and men who would pray all night for the move of God. Great revival leaders. Like Father Nash. Would go and find any place he could find. He didn't need any place special. Heard one of it, one of it where he crawled up into a hollow log and prayed all night. Finney came into town after he got done praying, and the power of God flooded the souls of men in the United States of America because somebody knew how a preacher, a preacher who was rejected by men, was accepted by God, the Father and made an ambassador to prepare the way of the Lord. True. True. There's many great men and women of God like that. God raised up. He's amazing. You can be seated. I'm, you know, I'm so blessed. I'm, Deborah, come here. Come here. I, I just want to, I want to introduce everybody to Deborah. I want two reasons. Deborah O. Oh. Deborah O oh is from Korea. And, and we, we agree that we don't call it South or North. We just call it Korea like it's supposed to be. Huh? That makes sense? And Deborah is a woman of God. She's an intercessor. Anointing of the Holy Ghost is upon her to prophesy to her nation, the nations in Asia. And I, I you know, I, uh, met Deborah in, in Korea, the southern part. And then she came, went with us over to Japan. And then I, I met this dear lady from, who is a, actually a missionary to Japan from Korea, right? And um, she had just come back from Thailand because when she was 70 years old, the Lord told her to go to Thailand. And she was sitting there 78 years old now because the Lord told her to come back to Japan because Japan needed her. Can you imagine that? Your life's not over till it's over. And this lady was, this lady was, I'm telling you, think about it. 70 years old, she had to go learn new languages, the languages that God had sent her to, go to a place. Uh, no one was there to welcome her. Huh? God just sent her. She did the work God told her to do. And watch what's happening in Asia. Greet everybody, Deborah. Hello. Hello. Uh, as long as you want. <laughs> Just wave at me when you're done. <laughs> you know, I am blessed. And you all are blessed. I'm not good in English, okay? But this is Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> My Jesus, he's the king. And he is in me and you. Is the hope of glory. <laughs> I am so blessed. I don't know what to say, but <clears throat> I'm I'm having a little pressure to go back to Korea because the Sunday is a Easter Sunday, and uh, you know I'm just keep thinking. Uh, 
Easter Sunday day, and also this is the week that I have, uh, you know, sort of a kind of a time that, you know, I have to be on fasting, I have to be on such and such things. But I'm, without the fasting, I'm having glorious time here. <laughs> 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 well, uh, I just want to give you uh, uh, Easter testimony, okay? Uh, so that uh, you all could be blessed. Actually, you know, I start the ministry uh, later part of my life, which is uh, over 40 years old. And uh, while, while I was in the Bible school, which is Christ for the Nation, uh, in Dallas, Texas, God forced me to go there. I have to abandon everything, the job and every life, and then join to the school over 40 years old. <laughs> and that was a real abandonment. Anyway, at that time, uh, really, I committed it to the Lord. Uh, by the way, God is uh, saying to you all, you are, uh, I see you all as a missionary, okay? So that's what I'm saying to you. <laughs> <laughs> Whether you realize or not, I see you all missionary. God going to send you out all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, when I uh, went to the school, and a year later, uh, my mother supposed to visit the Korea, uh, from Korea to USA. And that is the worst time financially. I don't have anything because uh, I you know, really give it out to the church and the, uh, the ministry and so forth. And my mother came out from Korea and she was uh, shocked. She was expecting that I live in such a nice life, but she called me, and I was in Dallas, Texas. My mother was in Baltimore, which is my brother's home, and she sees the son and the daughter is not coming, and she thought maybe with an hour I was running into it, but I don't have any money to go <laughs> back to the Baltimore. And at the same time, I had my youth group. I was a youth pastor at that time that in Korean church. And that youth group, we supposed to be out to the Mexico for the retreat. And first time in my life, I have to take my mother around and um, make a joyful and pleasant trip in USA. And here, I can't do nothing. And I was uh, so hurt. I want to do best as a daughter for my mother, but I couldn't do it. And at the same time, I had to take this kid to the Mexico, and I was praying and praying and praying, and finally, I don't have any choice, so take this kid to the Mexico. Anyway, I called the mother, say, you know, mother, just wait maybe, maybe one week at least. My mother hung up the line. 
Anyway, I went there. And the, the 40 youth, as just giving the, all the troubles they, they could, <laughs> we joined together with uh, American churches. I, I was serving Korean church, and it was all together 120 kids. And every teacher's counselor come to me and say, you kid did, you kid did, you kid did. And I don't know. I know they are that bad. The parents doesn't believe it. <laughs> so many parents, they are doctors, medical doctors, or uh, doctorate doctors, and they think their kid is good. <laughs> but they, their kid is really bad. <laughs> and uh, I don't know what to do. So the, the day before departure from Mexico, I don't have any way. And I'm going to put the resignation as soon as I arrive in Dallas, Texas. OK, because there is no other way. <laughs> so I was planned that. But yet, I said, God, I can do nothing. And that night, tell the truth, I had the worst time in prayer. All night, I was looking at the heaven and cry out the prayer. And the next morning, the teachers come back to me and say, you kid is this, 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 this. You have to punish them and all that. And I have to answer it, but I couldn't because I, I don't have any voice. I said, oh, sorry. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> I mean, sorry, but, <laughs> you know, my answer, they couldn't really communicate. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they all gave up, okay? <laughs> and I couldn't talk all day. And then, uh, the night before the departure, we had a uh, service. And, you know, about 150 people with teachers and students and all that. And while we were having service and praising and worship, one of the worst kids of my group, all of a sudden, he said, oh, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. I, I, I did the wrong things and so forth. And this is the kid, one of the really bad ones. <laughs> and nobody told him, but God touched him. And he started to repent. And his old girlfriend just say, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Did I do wrong things? <laughs> and they started to repent again. And it, it's just spreading all over. And the whole group repented. <laughs> and the next day, my boys is back. And we took a bus and we came back. And all the parents was waiting at the church. Did you have a good time? Did you have a good time? And they just say, yeah, yeah. But nobody say the truth. <laughs> so that retreat was over. And I have to go back to my mother's place. And here, I don't have any airplane ticket. I don't have any money for gas to be filled to drive back. But also, I didn't have that you know, enough time. And I was praying. God hold me three days there in Dallas. And then somebody unexpectedly that they gave me the money and that barely made it my airline ticket. So I flew back. And when I saw my mother for many years later like that, I was so hurt. 
and she was nearly dying. And my mother was uh, sick uh, with uh, many different kind of problem. And she was uh, 75 years old at that time. And I don't have any way that she gonna alive and back to Korea. So I said, the Lord, how come you, you made us uh, to be like this? And I said, I'm not going to serve you unless you make her or healed. I was uh, threatening the Father God. <laughs> 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 anyway, because she, even she couldn't swallow the water. If uh, I took her back to ch uh, the hospital, make her alive, then even I will say like this, I will commit to be a slave for 10 years if something make her alive. And I was uh, just uh, serving the water, little by little, one spoonful, every hour, and the pray. And I pray. Anything I could do to make her alive, I will do it. So I pray the best I can. Any prayer that will work, I will do it. <laughs> and I come to this prayer. The King Hezekiah prayed. I said, Lord, even though she's, uh, she's uh, going to die, make her alive. And I'm only looking at him and prayed. Real desperate prayer. And the miracle happened. And I, I asked, I don't know anything more. So I said, the Lord, give her 15 years life, Lord. And all healed. And I pray. At uh, 10 days later, she usually have uh, some stomach problem. 10 days later, she was completely healed. And uh, uh, there is uh, some food, Korean food, uh, cold noodle. That's not good for the digestion. But my mother loves it. I said, uh, do you want me to take to the Korean restaurant? And have that? Oh, no, I can't have that, you know. My stomach will not hold on it. So I said, well, God healed you. <laughs> so let's test on it. <laughs> <laughs> and we gone to the restaurant and, you know, she ate that. And she felt so good. And she said, she said to me, I mean, the God is so good. Why didn't I believe him when I was young? Yeah. And my mother was uh, all healed. And he's, uh, she's, she's talking like this. I'm walking on the top of the cloud. Anyway, so she had a happy time and gone back to Korea. And I said, I said at that time, I committed to the Lord. You hear her? I will commit it my full time to you. So I didn't have any choice. <laughs> <laughs> Became a full-time minister. <laughs> uh, God is also saying, while I was uh, praying, uh, 
This is the one thing I want to uh, do. Commitment to the Lord. So I committed at the time. So I finished the school and, you know, God led me into that ministry work. Okay. The story is not finished. So my mother came back, and at the time I was in USA, and I didn't plan to go back to Korea. I finished the school. I was uh, planning to do something else, and then doing this and doing that, and you know. And 1990, God showed, uh, 89, uh, God showed me vision. And wasn't clear to me, but God sent me out back to Korea. And God told me, this is the place you're going to do the ministry, not the USA. So, okay. Uh, and uh, I was uh, start to teach the school. And 1993, I came out, God talked to me, planted a church. So I started the Shalom Mission Church. At the same year, uh, three, four months later, my mother at that time was uh, sick again. Not, not that bad, but her heart was bad. And she was bad to be admitted to the hospital. But my brother, uh, he was a caretaker, and uh, he has to rush to the south of the, uh, Korea to do his uh, CPA business anyway. Otherwise, he is the one going to put her in the hospital. He's not a good believer. Uh, he, Believe uh, hospital, but not the church, not the Jesus. But he was gone down. And my other sister and me say, oh, we will take care of the mother. Don't worry about it. We're going to put her at the Shalom Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> so we did. <laughs> as soon as he gone, we, <laughs> we took her to our church. And then I said, oh, mother, this is the good time that you're going to stay with me. So on third day, on Friday, prayer meeting day, what happened? We were all praying, but on that night, there was a, such a spiritual battle. And we don't know about it, but we know we are on battle, very serious. And my mother usually quiet person. And she kneeled down, holding hand in Korean style and pray. And no sound. I, I shook her. I said, Mother, you have to pray loud. Otherwise, you're going to fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> and quiet. And I, I, we were praying. And then maybe 15, 20 minutes later again, Mother, you better pray loud. And no sound. And then about 10, 15 minutes later, Mother, you, you don't fall asleep. And I feel that something. And uh, she was dead. And her body was all rigid. No heartbeat, no breath, nothing. Oh, what happened? You know, I have a nursing background, and also um, I have a health background. And I know the death. <laughs> I don't need somebody else that, you know, she's dead. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, what's happening? We lay her down, but 
we have to really stretch it because it's all stiff. And there were about 20 some people. And that was uh, you know, nearly coming to the one o'clock in the night. And I look again and again, same thing. She's dead. And then I was thinking, oh, what, what I have to do? Am I call the ambulance? And then I said, no, no use, because she's not going to lie back. I mean, the hospital cannot do it. And, oh, if I'm not calling the ambulance, they might accuse. This woman managed to so-call, make the mother dead, and kept the body in the church. I hear the accusation of the devil. And she must be cult, you know, very easily. And I hear this sound. Oh, what I'm going to do? My church is only four months old. And here, not only my mother, what I'm going to do? And also I hear the, my brother's accusation. Oh, you so-called passed up the church and you make your mother killed in the church. <laughs> I told you you're supposed to take her to the hospital. <laughs> I was just, uh, <laughs> I don't know what to do. And I stood up and I asked uh, the brothers to carry her to one of the, uh, the baby's room where we have a, they have one small bed and make her lie down. So four of the men, my mother is a you know, small woman, but four men has to carry it. And we put her down there. And I, I come back and I had a, my sister pastor. I said, my mother's dad pray. There is nothing else. I gone to the telephone. I called my sister-in-law. Uh, my sister, not, not the sister-in-law, sister. I said, she's dead. And what? Yeah, she's dead while we were praying. And <laughs> <laughs> would you call? every single Christian of our family to, to awake and pray one hour that I only want you to pray one thing, make her to alive back. I hung up and I start to pray. And that's happens, you know, one o'clock or one and a half. And just to keep praying. And her body getting a little bit colder. <laughs> and what I'm going to do? Well, Lord, you know. <laughs> and and you know, I keep saying, yes, you are the resurrection, truth, and the life. And I don't know that word for sure, but Lord, show me resurrection, power. And about the five, 5.30 somewhere, 6 o'clock. Somehow, something, I still didn't give up. Pray. 
and she gonna, she was reviving back. The medically any knowledge of human knowledge you cannot explain. But she's alive back. <laughs> <laughs> And it's not only revive her back, and she lived nine more years. Okay? I thought she might die a few hours later. <laughs> so I call every family member, first my brother. I, I have to show him. She's alive. <laughs> and he doesn't believe that she was dead. <laughs> but anyway, she lived 15 years. What I prayed, Hezekiah prayer. I didn't know. And she kept the word, the promise, that 15 years life, she lived, and she was gone. Praise God! <laughs> His God, same! Yesterday, today, and forever. I want to tell this precious church, I am so blessed, and so do you. Be committed unto Lord. And God's going to use you mightily. Raise the dead to life. Yes. 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 And when, wherever you go, God will, his word, conform it through the signs and wonders and miracles. And there's going to be such a revival. And your pastor carried that spirit. And that's what I really connected to. I followed him. <laughs> Somebody asking me, how did you know him? Well, I don't know. But uh, when I heard some, someone came to Korea, and uh, I heard... I said, I want to see him. I want to meet him. And God opened me two hours later to meet him at the hotel. Can you believe it? <laughs> yeah, this is a divinely connected to. It's all going to happen to all of you. <laughs> so, I connected to, and I went to that meeting, and uh, I, while I was sitting in the service, and they announced that he's going to be in Japan. And then God said, you go. Okay, I will go, but I don't know how. <laughs> you know? <laughs> The, the brother in Dallas, Texas, Pastor, are you really going to go? And how? And you don't, you don't have any ride from L.A. to San Diego? And I said, well, there will be some way. I don't know. But. And he was so much worried all night. <laughs> and he found this friend, the precious brother, and he connected to him and say, 
Can you take her down there? <laughs> Thank God. And this is the connection again. You know, God divinely connected to Holy Ghost line, okay? Yeah. And here I am here. I know I had to come this, to, to this church, and I'm so glad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even I follow him to, to Japan, and I was going to go to the uh, Tokyo service. But God didn't make me to go to Tokyo and then uh, join to the Osaka. And there was a purpose to go to Osaka rather than Tokyo. So here, every little thing God is working on our life. Where to go, when to go, how to go. I mean... which person you have to meet, and what to do. So, <laughs> I'm so happy. And please pray. Pray and commit it to the Lord. That's going to bless your life and transform to your life and uh, happy forever. <laughs> God is so good. <laughs> awesome God we serve. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> oh, by the way, <laughs> Korea is one, okay? Yes. Yeah. Yes. North and South Korea are going to be united. Soon! Yes. <laughs> and the Korea also, uh, as the country, going to be leading country in Asia. Yes. Not to Japan, not to China. The Korea gonna be. <laughs> and <laughs> that's why we start the uh, Christ for the Nation of Korea School. And I have to tell you just a little things. It's okay. Five more, five more minutes. When I went back to Korea, 1990, I was teaching in, <coughs> in seminary. And uh, teaching three, four years, and 450 students gone through my class. I was uh, one of the main teacher, And they are doing such a wonderful work in these days. I mean, what you sow, that you're going to have a harvest. No freebies, OK? <laughs> what you sow, <laughs> you do harvest. And I see it. I mean, they're doing some, such a wonderful work. And there are so many, many schools in Korea. But uh, I was, after I finished that uh, school, uh, I started, I planted uh, Shalom Mission Church. Our church is a mission-oriented uh, church, like it's your church. I mean, mission, we had to do it. That's uh, one of our mandates, right? And uh, we had it some, we had a Shalom Bible School for a while. And then 
11 years later, I had to close out. And I said, oh, Lord, I'm so free, and I don't have to have any commitment, and, you know, just to carrying the church and so forth. But I have a burden on my heart, the raising up their disciples, raising, uh, raising up their laborers for the harvest. And I have a, such a burden. And, and four or five years back, one of the men came to our we so-called Holy Given School, and we were training, you know, not, well, you could say training, uh, six weeks or four weeks, you know, uh, we call about 50 of internationals and uh, half of, I mean, the, around 50 Korean nationals. We gather together, and uh, every day at the summertime, we have a holy given school, which is dedication to the Holy Spirit. And we live together and we share together and we do everything with the word of God and the impartation of the spirit. And that particular time, uh, I didn't have any speakers for the first week and somebody suggested so-and-so, so I said, okay, make him to come in. So he came in, and I didn't know his, his much background. I just uh, trusted the one who introduced that person to me. And he said, he was laughing. I said, oh, I saw you. So, saw me where? And he was the same classmate of a CFNI. So I said, oh, that is the year that uh, our president, Frida Linji, passed away. And he was the main assistant to her. Anyway, he was uh, saying, you know, we, we really, I truly miss her. And and she's the wife of a Golden Linji, who are part of the Voice of Healing Ministry in 1950s. So we were grieving together that she was gone, but she lived her life. And, uh, and then he was just saying, Ah, oh, you have the same anointing of her. I said, Oh, don't say it. <laughs> Anyway, God drove me back again that uh, school. Oh, oh, maybe someone else to do the school. And I prayed, I prayed. And God was just to keep, keep burden on me, starting the similar school like his uh, Christ for the nation. And... Uh, and then God said, oh, you are the mission church, and this is the best mission-oriented school in USA. Yeah, that I know. I didn't want to go to that school, but God, you pushed me to go to that school. And finally, God really uh, put me to start that school in Korea. And then I figured it out 23 years ago. I initiated that school. From the first school I started in Korea, I took that president to the CFNI and uh, let, uh, let us have uh, some kind of affiliation. And at that time, the Frida was uh, saying, no, not this time. Maybe some other time later. That was uh, 23 years ago. And now we open up CFNK awesome. School. Thank 
you know, the dreams, God's given dreams will come through. I have, I have a dreams of a schools. The, just the going to church is not enough to do the work. We need a training. We need more word of God to do the work. And our school is a kind of school that uh, not just the word of God, that word has to be experienced of our life. Yes. Then you could go out and to do the work yes. and need a training. Yes. And discipling is a, it's a kind of things, you know. And the, our student is only 27 students. And I said, Lord, it's only 27. And God said to me, oh, I started with 12. <laughs> Later on, I said, okay, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was uh, arrogant. <laughs> and our school is go going on. And your pastor is uh, one of spiritual covering for our school, whether he likes it or not. <laughs> <laughs> We are, we are only already advertised, so <laughs> you cannot throw the name out. <laughs> and we're going to work on the Asians and the other foreigners all over the world. We like to see them trained and learned and then send them back again to their nation, to their community, to do the work. Yes. And thank you. I know God put you on burden. I know you're going to pray. And thank you. <laughs> Deborah, we, Deborah, we love you, and we are honored. Truly, truly honored to be a part of what God's doing with you in Korea and Mongolia and it's how many other nations? Yes. So many nations. Yeah, we're going to work together. Yeah. Yeah, it's a done deal. It's just the way the Lord put it all together, isn't it? Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, living God. Hallelujah. It's amazing. <clears throat> it... Uh, really totally boggles the mind to think that when you say something, God hears it. That an awesome and almighty God who created everything, who ha who's above everything, who's beyond all that we could possibly ever imagine, actually, actually pays attention to us. <laughs> that when we speak, it is his, it, it, his, it, is, it, it, it is his delight to answer. Think about this. I want you to think about this. I'm going to minister a few things to you here, just briefly. And we're just going to watch the Lord solidify it in your heart, in your life. In a radical, supernatural way, a way that only he can do it. See, people that don't understand the ways of God and how he set everything up. He's made it so that all you and I have to do is truly desire the things that he's announced that we can have, and he does it. What happens is we try, we, we, we think we got to get to work, and we got to do some you know, things out of our own strength and out of our own ability, and 
You know, we look at God's call upon our life, the impossible, miraculous call of God. I mean, I love watching women of faith. I love watching these radical women who just find a place on the map. And it doesn't matter if it's somewhere up, you know, in the, in the jungles of Cambodia. They, and no one's called them. They just arrive there and do the stuff. Huh? I love that. Men and women of God who don't need a whole bunch of permission to go and do things. They've just got this gigantic fire of God moving on the inside of them in a passion that will not let them go. Well, well, well too many people sit around and wait for, us, wait for another day to come. I mean, I love how Reinhard Bonnke said, There's, God can do everything. He, he's all powerful, can do everything. There's only one thing he cannot do. Get you up off your couch. You're going to have to decide of your own heart and of your own will what it is that you're going to do. Now, I'm gonna, I want you to understand something. Father is not interested in all of our great strength, and he's not interested in all of our great ability. He's interested in our willingness to have just childlike faith and believe him, to stand back and watch him do the work. Just, just, just the, 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 the great... In amazing instructions of a living God in the moment of your, of your crisis, in the moment and the hour when all eyes are on you and they're looking for you to produce the results. And Father says, stand still <laughs> and behold the salvation of your God. <laughs> hey, listen, Father is just looking for us to have a desire. And out of that desire, that passion to do His will, that passion to be everything that Jesus has called us to be, to do these works and greater works, not to just have some simple little Christian life, but to live out the life. I mean, to live out the life of testimony that there is a realm called heaven. Mm -hmm. You know, when we read in the Bible, when we read about Elijah, we think, well, Elijah is a special guy. Well, Elijah was a special guy because he testified to us that heaven is a real realm and that you can live there. All you have to do is be willing to access that realm. And suddenly, you don't live as a mere man anymore. You don't live a purely human existence bound by everything of circumstance, environment, and physical need. All of a sudden, you're promoted into a realm where you're the ambassador of God Almighty. Yeah. You stand in His stead. You stand in His place. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You speak God answers. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I must have got an end of the day a lot. Hallelujah. Well, you know, I'm okay with Korea being the, in charge. I mean, the Lord's what told you that's what's going to happen. Korea's going to lead Asia. That's fine. But, I mean, that's the way it happened back in the late 1800s. God started moving in Korea. Holy Ghost fire um, among the people of Korea began to burn. And then, and then, and then it jumped over into northern China, Yanji, and it spread. The people of the Holy Ghost began to move and... The heavenly people rose and a great and mighty power of, of revival was seen across Asia. It's going to happen again. You know what? Father's got great plans. He's invited you and I to participate with them. But what happens is we get overwhelmed by who we are and our circumstances, who we think we are, rather. And the circumstances that are around us that are nothing but smoke screens created by Satan to keep you from being who God's purposed you to be. Father has purposed us to be people of great faith, Amen. a great divine power and authority, yet doubt and, and, and unbelief, which your evil spirits opposes continually. Mm -hmm. We've got to decide what we're going to do with ourselves. Huh? Amen. I'm going to tell you tonight that, listen, if you would just understand the basics, the basis of your relationship with the Lord of having been converted and become like a little child, of having been changed, having been transformed. I'm talking about a conversion, obviously, that gave you the capacity to know God. That's a, that's a pretty powerful capacity. Amen. Huh? Holy men of old, great men, people uh, who sap separated themselves and consecrated themselves to seeking God, knowing God, and God anointed us with special anointings, looked and saw a day into the future. And they... Uh, 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 this day of the church and, and, and the spirit of Christ which is in them that testified of this day and spoke through them, revealed to them that it wasn't for them uh, the things that they were speaking and the things that they were testifying and the things that they were prophesying, but rather it was for you and me. 
It was for us in this day, in this time. We live in a moment of time that people cannot even begin to imagine this moment in time. You sitting here tonight, it is too much for you to believe because you've been fashioned and shaped from the day you were born in the image of man to, to have a, a whole uh, a, a definition of the value of your life that is not even real. The value of your life is defined by what God did for you when he redeemed you, when he sought you out and called you, when he, when he gave to us this new birth at the cost and the expense of the very life of his only begotten son. A, a love going on between Christ Jesus and the Father that you and I can't even begin to comprehend right now. But Father wants us to know the love of Christ that passes all knowledge. It's an experience realm. That Deborah was just saying, it's not just the word of God, it's experiencing it, it's taking it in, it's eating it, it's having it engrafted into your being. It's having the living word beginning to be expressed in your life. Listen to me, I know about what Satan would do to try to run the smoke screen of his accusation, his condemnation, his discouragement. But there is a word of God that is like a light that shines at a dark price. And all you've got to do is be willing to turn away from all of that nonsense, all of that meaningless lie. Turn towards Jesus. Turn towards the Word of God that is being announced to you right now and say, I want to live that life. I want to live the life of Christ Jesus. Amen. And I'm telling you, it's, it's far greater than the fact that the wind and the waves must obey you. And they must. They must. Father called us and ordained us to bring forth a special kind of fruit. This special kind of fruit is this. Whatever I ask the Papa, he'll do for me. Whatever I ask the Father, he will do. This is the fruit that he ordained. A dear friend of mine well, went over across into, uh, into North Korea. I'm going to have to say North Korea. I hesitate. But just let everybody know what we're talking about geographically from Yanji three years ago. She went out into, she went as a missionary. What did she got to do as a missionary covertly? What did she got to do as a missionary? She, 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 did, she didn't go with the tag of missionary. She was sent out of heaven, out of the realm of heaven to go in as the ambassador of the kingdom of God. What did she do? She went out in the field and worked with the people. Worked side by side with the people in the field. Wasn't able to say much, but every day working with them. Every day sleeping with them, eating with them, working with them. All that year she was part of, pl of, of plowing the ground, sowing the seed, tending the, tending the plants. And about harvest time was about ready to come. And suddenly there came an early storm, an early monsoon, a rainstorm that was set into that region. And when it starts, it's over. It's over. Because it's going to continue to rain. And if you haven't brought in the harvest, it's lost. At that moment in time, God stirred her. She said, I'm here as an ambassador of heaven. I will command the storm and it will leave. Because God wants you to know who he is. She commanded the storm. The storm left. 5,000 people came to Jesus in a, in, in a very short time. People got all these ideas of how it's got to work. You try to imagine, you try to think it through. I'm telling you, God doesn't work in the imaginations of men's minds. He doesn't work in the logic realm. He works in the logos realm. He works in the manifested word. He works in the manifested Christ Jesus. He works in, and in speaks spiritual things. By the power of the Holy Ghost, he ministers after a realm that is impossible with men. He has a totally different value system. God doesn't value you how much math you know. God doesn't value how much interest you have within the, the stock market. There's an entirely different value system. He values how you walk humbly with your God. He values purity. It's a great price, meekness. He values the things that belong to the Spirit. He values love, the love of laying down your life for the friends. Extended his love towards the enemy, but laid down his life for the friends. We the friends. We the household of faith. If I could get you, get you to know who you are. Satan is going to do everything to stop you from knowing who you are, because as soon as you know who you are, 
I'm going to tell you right now, he, 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 everything that he's been trying to do in the United States of America, ruined, ruined, ruined. I'm standing here, I'm preaching, I'm declaring, I'm not going to stop preaching and stop declaring because it's the way God does it. He's chosen that through the foolishness of preaching, he might show his power. From somebody who's just going to stand there and proclaim until it happens, what are we going to proclaim? His word. Is the living word. It's a powerful living word. Satan opposes it on every hand. He runs every kind of interference in the mind, in the thought realm of men. Men's got, men have a thought realm. Their thinking is all about fame and, and fortune and success and, 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 and being in first place and being admired. And so Jesus said, they're going to reject me. They're not going to accept me. They're go, the priests are going to throw me out. They're going to kill me. Peter says, not so, man. We on a run here. We on a run to rule and dominate everything. Listen to me. Don't talk that way. Jesus said, Satan, get out of my face. That's the way we would say it now. He said, Satan, get behind me as you would read it in the translation. But literally, it's Satan, get out of my face. <laughs> Hallelujah. I believe in the lay, I believe it's a lay, lay language. It's, you know, common language. Calling that Greek, I like to translate it that way. Satan, get out of my face. <laughs> Peter, all you're doing is thinking like a man. You're not thinking like God. <laughs> you don't understand the power. There's no freebies here. You, you're going to have to sow something, eh? Hallelujah. Jesus Christ sowed his life so that you and I could be the harvest. Hallelujah. You and I could be the fruits of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, so that you and I could go everywhere with his divine power and authority. God sent Jesus to one nation, just one, one nation. And he there stood for three years to be examined as every sacrifice had ever been examined, to be seen to be the Son of God with power, to be per the perfect spotless lamb. So that he could, he could breathe on you and me. So that he could ascend, ascend up whom the heavens had to receive until the time of restoration of all things. Until he makes his enemies his footstool. He must reign there at the right hand of the Father until all of a sudden his church begins to arise and go like a mighty rushing wind. <laughs> and Father does that. He, just, he raises up people of prayer and intercession. He raises up pre prophets to prophesy. Then I said, <laughs> Somebody said, oh, we pray and God raise up prophets. Oh, that's, just, that's funny. <laughs> because when the prophets come, very few people recognize them. <laughs> and even less want to listen to what they got to say. <laughs> they intolerable. They're intolerable. They talk in impossible things. They call on us to go do things that go beyond any imaginable, reasonable suggestion. They're calling us to rise up and begin to shine with the light of divine power and glory. To speak on behalf of God. To speak the word of faith. To speak life where there is death. To cause nations to come into the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Richard Moore was here last couple weeks ago. I said, Richard, you know, you, you called me up. And he was talking to me on the phone. I was out in my horse pen and I was cleaning manure out of the horse pen. You called me up and you said somebody invited you to go to Nepal. A couple of months earlier, the Lord had been seating me because I had realized that that nation had just opened up, that the king had turned his power over to parliament and there, would, there was a window of confusion. There was, there was in, the, the Maoist insurgents were creating more troubles. War was going on. Well, this is a perfect time to go preach, man. There's confusion in the ranks. You know what I'm saying? That's the way God moves. He sets confusion in the ranks and you go spoil them. <laughs> Why did, I mean, I'll give you many examples of that. But anyway, he's calling me up and he's telling me, oh, I've got invited. I don't know if I'm going to go. And I'm, and I'm hollering at him on the phone. You've got to be kidding me, man. Get some backbone. Buddy, this is the first time in how many thousands of years? I mean, kind of thing, you know. Get, go, what are you saying you're not going to go? What are you saying you're thinking about it? And I'm right in the middle of just chastising him verbally. Huh? <laughs> and then I do that because the anointing is on me. The anointing is strong on me. It is, and, and suddenly, as I'm telling him, my goodness, I can't believe it. I can't, you got an opportunity. You, and you're thinking about it. Power of God hits me. And I just got real quiet. Because when the power of God hits you sometimes, you don't speak anymore. Sometimes the Spirit of the Lord hits you, you speak. Sometimes the Spirit of the Lord hits you, and you don't talk no more. 
And so now he thinks I'm just waiting for him to respond. So he's going on and on and on saying, yeah, you're right. You know, he's apologizing. And I'm like captivated by the presence of the Lord. And he's like, are you still there? Is everything OK? And I go, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm here. I said, uh, I think I'm going now. <laughs> this done backfired. <laughs> <laughs> this backfired. So, I mean, this, I just want to talk about how easy it happens, how unexpected these things happen, how you just obey God and do what God told you to do faithfully and watch what God will do. This is the way God works. He just takes us from following the sheep and calls us to set us up to do those things that are impossible, to do mighty things that go beyond the imagination of anybody, that goes beyond the possibility of anything you've ever been able to dream for yourself. All you do is holding on to a promise, God's going to use me, and that's what I want more than anything else. And you can't even imagine what it looks like. The next morning, a preacher that's never been to my house knocks on my door, and I'm having coffee, and I'm still stunned. And I looked at him, I look, he's at the standing at the door, and I'm looking at him like, what are you doing here? And of course, I live in, I live in the wilderness. You've got to go down a long dirt road to come to a house that some people believe you never return from <laughs> in the mountains to find me. I'm not kidding. And so I'm, I'm just kind of stunned. And I, for a while, I don't even invite him. And I'm just looking at him. <laughs> he said, so how are you doing? I said, well, I think I'm going in Nepal. He said, you are? I know somebody in Nepal. I said, come on in, man. Come and sit down. <laughs> come in. And then we saw as God used us to shake a, shake a nation, 2006, where the great signs and wonders of, first of all, a massive crowd like never been gathered in 2006 in a nation. Such signs and wonders and miracles, we just stood back. We watched the open vision come from heaven and I stand on the platform. We said that war comes to an end. The government will recognize the church as an ally, not a foe. All took place within two months. The federation of churches and the Alliance of Churches was formed. Huh? That's, why when we go to, that's why we go to the nation in Nepal. We have so many people come alongside of us because the whole Federation Alliance of the Churches, God uses us to prophesy unto existence. And they know it. They were there. The leaders were there. And there's thousands of pastors now. Hallelujah. And then 2008, to watch tens of thousands of people come running to Jesus in the Crusades pack out the national icon, the symbol of the kingdom of Hinduism, their national stadium, to see that happen. I'm telling you, dear people, I, I'm just, I'm not saying that in a self-serving way. I'm just saying, look, I was, I was scooping poop. <laughs> I was cleaning the horse pen, in other words, that's what we call it. Huh? I was cleaning the, the horse pen, minding my own business, chastising somebody on the phone for t thinking about taking up an opportunity in an unreached people group. And then Papa says, you're going. And then he put it all, he worked all the miracles. Mm -hmm. It's all history. It's all in the history. I think, I think the one crusade there, the last time I looked at one crusade, you know, thousands and thousands of hits of where people have gone and looked. You know, at all the masses of Hindus come running for Jesus. All Hindus, all Hindus, all Hindus running for Jesus. If you want Jesus, come right now. Thousands come rushing the platform. That's just getting warmed up. And right now, what it is, it, it, God's work, God works it out in, the, in, the, in a very personal way, in the, in the places that you and I live, in the places that you and I work, in the real issues that you and I confront, and the discouragements, and the doubt, and the pains, and the hardships, and the impossibilities, and, 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 and the hopelessness, and the despair, and everything that seems like it ain't going to work, it ain't going to happen. If you do not, if you will not bend nor bow, if you not, will not weary in well-doing, I'm telling you, God will call you out. If you want him more than anything else with the desire of your heart not by the works of your own hand not by shaping yourself not by some strength of the human ability not by some self-interest but by the power of a living God who will transform and, and change the one who calls upon his name also establishes in our life by the same Holy Ghost all these supernatural works if you remain faithful I'm ready for a couple verses of scripture to you I can find my Bible. I like this one. It doesn't have six font. <laughs> Somebody said, 
Moses' eyes weren't dim, but he looked, I'm going to tell you right now, he had letters that are about that big. Oh my God, I suck in the Melaka di Bakli no Mogsahanaka Hitti. I still go to Mala to Hati Kitigataya. Hallelujah. I'm qualified to be used of God because He uses the things that are weak and the things that are rejected and the things that are despised and things that when people first look at it and glance at it, they say worthless. Throw it away. It's a throwback. Get something else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you could have been great and wonderful in your own eyes. You get converted and become like a little child. All of a sudden, you become absolutely dependent upon God too. You become yeah. weak within your own ability. As soon as you see the greatness of God, you abhor yourself. Even though you might have been a mighty man, as soon as you see the greatness of God, you abhor yourself. You put your hand over your mouth and say, I've spoken once, yea, twice, but I'm done speaking now. I'm not saying another thing. My comeliness has been turned. All that I thought was beautiful and wonderful about me has been turned into something vile. It's like dung and refuge. All we want, all we want, come on, people, listen to me and tell you, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. All I, listen, all I want is a moving of God that will arrest your hearts in such a way that everything will be redefined for you in the, in, in the, in the, in the, in the context of who he is. And being overwhelmed by his goodness and his greatness, you might be the great and mighty prophet Isaiah, but being overwhelmed by his goodness and greatness, you might have been the one who could prophesy and tell people because of their sin and their iniquity, the judgment of God rests upon them. You, you might have been the one who was able to speak perfectly the word of God, but you behold his glory and suddenly you say, I'm undone. I'm, un I'm undone. I'm unclean. I need help here. I'm not, I'm, not as, I'm not what I thought I was. I, I, got a new, I got a new definition now. And Father's there to help. Seraphim, take care of them. The seraphim who's not harmed by fire. The flame cannot kindle upon him. His, uh, in fact, the seraphim would be a ministering spirit. A flame of fire himself. But can't touch the holies of holies of holies. Can't touch the holiness of holinesses that, sits, that burns before the presence of his, of his majesty. But taking a special instrument, reaches, grabs a hole of coals, touches the lips of the prophet, says, now you're clean, now you're pure. How much more does the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ far beyond the coals from off the altar that burns before his presence, that burns with the passion of the heart of the Father for his purpose, for his, for, for his plan that, that it goes beyond all that you and I could even, once again, ask or think. God's got something so special in store. Man, I've been so blessed to stand in his presence. I've been so blessed to touch that realm of glory, to see the beauty of those things that belong to heaven that Father's allowed me to see up to this point. And... Uh, be, I've been, I've been over, so overwhelmed with his glory that, you know, couldn't move. But I know it's just scratching the surface of all that joy that is in his presence, all that fullness of joy that's in his presence, that pleasure that's there forevermore. Just a wonderful, wonderful, beautiful, glorious thing of being around him. Huh? I get to live with the most special human being on the earth, my wife. I'm not kidding you. This is not, I'm not trying to earn any points here. I've already, that's already been established. She's given me everything freely, just like Jesus. I wake up to a woman every morning who is just so happy and so delighted with the presence of the Lord in my presence. I'm telling you, that is a beautiful way to live. You want to be around people like that. But you, I'm going to tell you something. I say that only to begin to describe to you what it's like to wake up with God. What it's like to be in his presence what it's like to be around him. Uh, what, it, it, you're just going to have to experience it for yourself because I don't have time to go through all the expressions, but I'm telling you, there's bless, blessing there, there's glory, there's honor, there's majesty there. I'm telling you, there's, there's life forevermore there, there because we can't describe all the life that he's made available to us. We just grasp for some word and say abundant, abundant life, <laughs> super, elite, ab super abounding life, life forevermore. This life, 
We say eternal life, but it's the life forevermore. It's, it's the life that God himself has. This is a life that, that shines like a light unto the nations if the life is allowed to be manifested in us. And Father's made a way that this life could be expressed through us in an unlimited realm like rivers, as though rivers converging into the Victoria Falls or Niagara Falls, the converging of, of a sound of many waters. An unlimited expression of divine power and glory. Mm -hmm. But there's so much interference running against you, trying to make you believe it's something totally different about yourself. You, 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 you've normalized yourself with those that are around you. You've reduced your existence to a monetary value. All these things are meaningless. Your life is more than raiment. Huh? Your, your life is more than meat. Your body more than raiment. Huh? If you just let... The kingdom of God and his righteousness be more important to you than anything else. If you let God's kingdom and his righteousness be more important to you, it just becomes a desire. It, becomes a, it just starts as a desire and it becomes a burning fire of passion within you. <laughs> I, <laughs> I grabbed some coffee the other morning and I said, it was said, but said around, I said, oh, wow, well, it's still, it's, it's lukewarm. That's fine. So the Lord is not having a lukewarm fellowship. He won't do it because it's mixed, it's mixed. Because everything around him is on fire in the fire. It's truth, it doesn't, has, it has no blend. Somebody said, I went to the meeting, there was a mixture. God doesn't mix with nothing. He doesn't mix with man. Huh? You need better discernment. In fact, all of us need better discernment. That discernment only comes from the knowledge of the Lord. And if we give ourselves to knowing him and living by his word, we'll have the knowledge of the Lord and we'll understand the fear of the Lord and we'll understand what it means to begin to seek him and to begin to call upon his name and truth and, and, and righteousness. And I'm telling you right now, the, the anointing that Father wants to give to you is absolutely a direct result of you beholding his glory. Hallelujah. The, the Holy Spirit's come to just cause you and I to behold the glory of the only begotten Son, full of grace and truth. Amen. Hallelujah. He's full of grace and full of truth and he's filled us up with both of us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's not an other. He's not a transcendent other. He's, he's one with you and me. He's right here, right now. He's present. He's a living, present God right now. He's in you. Could you believe that God walks in you, that he lives in you? Huh? Can you? Huh? Hallelujah. Huh? Can you go look in the mirror and say, wow, Father delights to live in this place. It is amazing. And, start, and just start connecting with, with what? what he said and believe him no matter what you see or no matter what you hear or no matter what you might think to where that those things that he has promised is bigger than every fear that would possibly come against you his love for you that that manifest presence that is continually there that that God wants you to be able to experience that will take your tired body and make you feel awake. That will take the sickness and cause it to immediately depart from you. The disease will have to go out of your body. The, every torment, every affliction has to leave. The moment that you begin to just enjoy his presence. You turn away from you. You turn away from the problems. And you turn away from other issues and other desires. And you turn only unto him. And you say, Lord, you all that I desire, that you all that I want, you all that I need suddenly things begin to get redefined for you. You begin to make some commitments to God and then you step out and you do it and you discover that the miracle working resurrection power, that same power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, that same authority that's in his, in his words come out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Can you, imagine, can you imagine being a prophet of old and hear the Lord say, I have put my words in your mouth. Can you imagine that? I put my words in your mouth. Go and speak all these words to the people. For I put my words in your mouth. He's put his words in our mouth. Amen. And the prophets longed to have what we have. They would have, they would have, ha, huh, they rejoiced to see this day. Huh? Listen. They longed to be able to have the opportunity. Come on, people. Come on, people. Come on now. Come on. Let the word of God find place in your heart. Let it ignite a fire in your soul. That suddenly all these other things that have given you value and been meaningful to your life is nothing but, is nothing but something that you would cast out. In fact, you wouldn't even want to cast it out because you wouldn't have it in the house in the first place. It belongs in the outhouse. That's what Paul said. 
I count it all dung. It's loss. It's refuge. It's nothing compared to the knowledge of Jesus. We compared to what he's revealed in me. I, I used to, I, I struggled all my lifetime. I gave myself continually to the mitzvah. I gave myself continually to earning some kind of a closer place and position with God to be worthy of this gift of holiness, to be worthy of this gift of righteousness, to ultimately ascend into oneness with him. And suddenly I met the righteousness on the road to Damascus and received it all as a free gift. Mm -hmm. I beheld his glory and everything else that I had valued up to that point became nothing of value to me anymore. This is all we asking God to do in the church. This is, this, is, this is revival prayer language right here. This is what we cry out to God. People, I, when, you, when you understand that there is no... The only definition of church is to have a meeting like Jesus had in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. If you do not have a meeting like Jesus had in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, you had no church. You went to a religious meeting. Mm -hmm. so when, when that becomes reality to you, that the church is his body, it's the manifest presence of Jesus, the person of Jesus Christ, and you understand what Papa is purposed to do through the church, suddenly you're not going to be happy with all of the status quo anymore. You're not going to be, you're not going to even be willing, you're going to be filled and defiled to even participate with the thing. Huh? Yeah, that's revival, that's revival passion, you know. And those are the words that people can't tolerate, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's all right. We're going to shout them out. We're going to just keep silent. We can go everywhere and prophesy to the nations and say this is what God's going to do. Hallelujah. I tell you, Satan has to take his, take, Satan has to take his filthy hands off the nation of Japan. He has to take his filthy hands. I'm telling you right now, I'm smashing him. I, I'm smashing, as I, I'm standing here standing up, smashing him. His stronghold of hell that has gripped a nation. We'll grip it no longer. Amen. The blindness and the darkness and the seducing power of sorcery over that nation will hold it in bondage no longer. Which one happens? Amen. I won't need to take a golfer and a baseball player to get people to come to the meeting. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh my gosh, you lie, day. Papa's got a day and a moment, a time. All I got to do is walk around praying, oh, God, use me. Oh, God, use me. Oh, God, I have a desire to be used. I'm going to sit around and go, oh, you know, I'm just not sure that the word of God is, you know, really effective for me. Maybe, you know, maybe it's not meant for me. Maybe I'm just supposed to work for a living. Maybe I'm just supposed to support the church. Jesus never said, listen, all authority is given to me in heaven and earth. Now go and support the church. He didn't say that. He said, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Jesus said, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me, he, he made it very pointed. He said, if you're ashamed of me, my name, and this gospel, I'll be ashamed of you. He made it very clear what he's talking about, losing your life. Yeah. Then you may find it. We got a lot of examples. There's a, big, there's a great cloud of witnesses right now standing over the balcony of heaven saying, what is wrong with you people? Huh? Jack Cole used to do it like this. My God, what's wrong with you people? <laughs> well, yeah, but by the time you know, you just had five people that were born deaf. They hear it now, all right? Now you have some people come through. They are born blind. They see. And, and, and we were just sitting there. And he's like, well, you just seen the power of God being revealed. And you're not even moving. You haven't even cracked a smile yet. There's not even been a shout of hallelujah. Huh? Religion is a ditch. It's a prison. People sit around and speculate in their mind. Huh? Pharisees come to spy out our liberty, to listen to Satan, to speak out accusations against us. Just go ahead, just keep on right on, do whatever it is you're doing. Because I'm telling you right now, the grace and the glory of God rest upon me and rest upon everyone who's standing here in this place who will not be denied, who wrestled with the Lord as Jacob did of old. Huh? Who taking a, I take, you know, we take hold of God, God takes hold of us. Praise the name of the living God. Every vile spirit of hell, every unholy thing, every evil spirit that has done its work to stop the moving of the Holy Ghost in the city is being run off. Huh? And I'm telling you, listen, Satan is rebellious. People don't realize this. Satan is, this may come as a, as, a, as a shock to you, but Satan is rebellious. Huh? Satan is deceived. He does not believe that Jesus defeated him at the Calvary's cross. He does not believe it. He's, he's convinced that he won. He's rebellious. 
You tell him to go, and he says, I don't have to. I'm not listening to you. Huh? Jesus stood there before the man of Gadara, who was possessed with legions. Huh? And he said, and literally, he, he said, he continued, continued to say, go. I mean, think about Satan. I command you to Jesus. He knows who you, I know who you are. You're the son of God. Now I adjure you. I command you. I put forth a petition based upon my rights in the kingdom of God. Leave me alone. Now, if he's going to say that to God, what is he going to say to you? If he's going to say that to Jesus, what are he going to say to me and you? Huh? S something similar, but with a greater force. <laughs> Jesus continued to say, go. And because he understood the mindset and the hearts of those people, that they would reject him anyways. And those demons said, don't let us, we, we, we would like to stay in our territory. Please do not cast us out of our territory. Jesus, but let us go over into that sw herd of swine. Jesus allowed it, that they may remain in the territory. And I'm not here to talk about well, the way demon spirits act, or I'm not here to talk about the authority that angels of darkness have over regions and over people and over territories and over family groups. I'm here to talk about the blood of Jesus Christ that breaks off every yoke. I'm, not, I'm here to talk about an authority that was given to God's people to go everywhere preaching this gospel. And by the power of the preaching of the gospel, Satan has to obey. The power of the preaching of the gospel. We don't preach ourselves, we preach Jesus. We don't talk about ourselves at all in that sense. In other words, we're not looking to our own ability. We're not looking to something that we have. Hallelujah. And Papa's got to sort that out with us. I mean, I, there was times, I <clears throat> shared this morning, there was times I prayed for people and I prayed passionately and earnestly and they didn't get healed. There was other times I looked at, just looked at people and said, you're healed. And, in, and they were healed instantaneously of incurable diseases. And, I'm, you know, and then what happens, we get it all, we, get, we, we try to get ourselves all, you know, mixed into the equation. We convolute it with who we are in the sense of what giftings we have and, you know, what faith we have. And, and the Lord has to sort all of that out for us to get our motive right and so that we constantly look to Christ Jesus, the healer who's in the, on the, living on the inside of us. It's God that does the work. It's the, it's the power of God that's working with us. Jesus goes everywhere with us, confirming his word with signs following. He's going to sort the thing out. We don't understand a lot of things that take place. It's not our job to understand it. It's our job to go and announce it. Huh? It's not our job to bring forth the goods. It's, it's my job to tell them, get the sick, get the dead, bring them. Diseased, blind, deaf, it don't matter what's wrong. Paraplegic, bring them. They're going to be healed. Because that's what Jesus, I'm not ashamed of his words. I'm not ashamed of him. I'm not ashamed of his words. That's what he told me to do. That's what we go and do. And then he's going to do the work. He told me to go and preach it. Now, I want to I just point out a couple of verses of scripture to you on this issue. Because I want you to, I want you to, I want you, I want you to find all your strength and all, all of your ability from this day forward like never before in Christ Jesus and in the anointing that he gives. I want you to be able to recognize that, if, that God is going to teach you. He wants to teach you to hear his voice. He wants, you to teach, he wants to teach you to move under his inspiration, under, in, under, 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 under his influence. So that all he's got to do is whisper to you, I want you to get a ticket and I want you to go to some nation and you're going to go. What nation right now is burning in your heart? I mean, there's many years that the United States of America was the only nation in my heart. So I couldn't even think about, I couldn't think about anything outside of San Diego. I, I, all I could think about was San Diego, Southern California. God gave me a vision for this place. And all I could think about was San Diego. I'd be, I, was, I was invited to great churches, large, huge churches, church, seven churches, four, five, 6,000 people. And, and I said, no, I can't go. I'm, I'm, I'm busy. All I could see is, all I could see is this city. This region's in my heart. Mm -hmm. I've asked God to give me what, Jesus, what he gave to his only begotten son, what Jesus Christ gave to me as an heir and a co-inheritor with him. The nations in the uttermost parts of the earth from my possession. Mm -hmm. The heathen from my inheritance. Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. Beginning with this place right here. Father wants to seed you. He wants to seed you with another purpose bigger than the way you've been living. Huh? We're getting ready. 
we, listen, things, God prophesies, it doesn't, sometimes things happen, take a long time to happen. They take a long time to happen. There, there's prophecies that, that God declared and spoke over my life. It took 30 years before it came, came to pass. God prophesied that we'd have this property 12 years ago. It took 12 years, all kinds of things go on. All kinds of things take place. You can, you can faint along the way. You can be distracted. You can be overcome by situations. But what happens when you will believe the good word of God and you, you, you won't turn aside? You have no other place to go. I mean, there's times where you might be offended because of the word. You might be offended because of things didn't work out like you wanted them to work out. And Jesus said, well, you also go away. You better have the right answer. Where do we go? You alone have the word of life. We don't have no place else to go. We're going to stay right here with you. I'm not going to turn aside and worship demons. I'm not going to turn aside and begin to be a part of the influence of the God of this world and be neutralized because I'm telling you right now, Satan is doing that in a very effective way. He's been neutralized in the church because of this, because the thing about it is to whomever you yield your, your member servant unto, whomever you yield your members to obey, you become the slave, whether of, right, whether of righteousness unto holiness or sin unto death. That's what Paul said in Romans chapter 6. That's what he said. Of what a man is brought into bondage with, the, or overcome with, rather, the same as he brought into bondage with. And the Lord set the church up as the hinderer, the one who holds back, iniquity but if we're allowing iniquity to be in our lives and sin to have a place in our lives then we've been neutralized we've lost out on authority so we call on you into a place of consecration to God let me tell you something fire of God's going to start burning in his church in a way the people won't get, people will begin to understand, they'll begin to fear. Holy Ghost convictions coming back to the church. People are going to be gripped by the terror of the Lord. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. You think Father's going to allow his son, his, the name of his son, to be profaned and blasphemed? You think that's going to continue to go on? You think the things are going to continue to go on that bring such a misrepresentation to who Christ Jesus is in the midst of the church? I'm telling you right now. We, I'm not in a different church. I'm in the same church that Ananias and Sapphira fell di down dead in. I'm in the same church. I'm in the same church. I'm in, I'm in the same church that the Apostle Paul uh, was the main minister in. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, we, 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 we in this succession of it all. In fact, there is not been just a continuous event. And it's succession at all. First Corinthians, quickly, I'm just throw a couple more logs on your fire. <laughs> so I might be a little wet. We got some answers to that. Fuel. We'd douse you in some fuel. I don't care how wet you are, you're going to burn. <laughs> <laughs> You'll burn and you'll dry out and then you'll be just a day of bonfire. That's what we do in the wintertime. It's time to burn everything out at the ranch. And throw a little fuel on it. And we just basically have a little prayer meeting and say, Lord, we're just going to do this as a witness to what we want to see happen in the midst of the church. <laughs> Hallelujah. An act of intercession right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray in Jesus' name that every person in here is consecrating your life to the Lord. I'm praying in the name, I, I'm praying in the name of Jesus that everybody in this place is healed mentally, spiritually, physically, financially, in every way, healed, be made whole, because all that all that you all that you've desire, determined to do, all that you desire are the things that God has for you. And He's gonna take that desire and He's gonna. Do the work in such a way that he'll make your way perfect. 
1 Corinthians chapter 1. God chose the foolish things. Can I, let me just say it like this to start with. Let me say, let me read verse 1, 4, and 13 to start with. Kind of get the context right for you. And then I can just minister briefly things that the Lord's put in my heart. I want to, so in chapter 2, I want to real quickly read verse 1, 4, and 13. In chapter 2, the same book. Also, brethren, when I came to you, it came not with excellency of speech and the wisdom declaring excellency, excellency of speech. I could do tongues better than I can do English right now. An excellency of speech or of wisdom declaring unto you the testimony of God, verse 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but by demonstration of a spirit and power. Verse 13. Which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teach, but which the Holy Ghost teach, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And to be able to have that, the Lord said, take no thought what you're going to say. When you brought before kings and, and, and magistrates, when you brought before people, or even, I know I don't take it even a step much further, anytime you're going to speak on my behalf, because in the self-same moment, at the self-same time, the Holy Ghost will tell you what to speak. It would not be you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Spirit of the Father speaking through me. Father, Spirit speaking through me right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul said, if I come to you speaking tongues, what shall it profit you? Lest I come speaking also by knowledge, by revelation, by prophecy, and by doctrine. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. That's the utterances of the Holy Ghost speaking. And then, so how is that going to become a reality in our life? Suddenly, suddenly we're going to have to be, stop trying to put it all together out of our own mind. Does, does, does that suddenly mean that you don't need to spend time in the Word anymore? No, you need to spend more time in the Word. Hallelujah. You know how, you know how I prepare for Sunday morning service? I just read a book of the Bible. That's how I prepare. I just read. I read. I was about to do that. I'm angelical. I'm about to be the next dude. I'm about to be that. I'm trained to be speak. I'm training to speak right now. Blocks to talk about it. Better be. That's the best way to train. Cause now I don't know what I'm saying. Blocks to talk about it. Better be. Holy Ghost is giving me the utterance. That's the way He's going to give me the rest of it as well. Huh. But you know what? You're going to have to deal with a whole lot of self-consciousness. You're going to have to deal with a whole lot of fear. You're going to have to deal with a whole lot of of issues that that you've been trained to be very very concerned about. Because you, you, you're not prepared after a human manner, after, after the manner of men. Oh, but I know how to get prepared after the manner of heaven. I know how to get prepared after the manner of God. I know how to be taught by the Holy Ghost. Well, then, then what am I going to have to be willing to do? I'm going to go ahead and back up to verse 26 of chapter 1. I want you to understand, men, how, brethren, that, how, that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty men, not many noble are called. Hallelujah. <laughs> the Lord likes taking shepherds. He likes taking fishermen, ignorant fishermen. He, that's what he likes. He likes taking someone who is a farmer and who's plowing with two yoke of oxen. Or in Elisha's case 12. But God's chosen the foolish things of the world. There's no room for Jesus in any dimension of the world. So if you're fashioning yourself after the world, A.A. A. Allen saw in every academic realm, he saw a demon of spirit and an angel of darkness associated with it, taking intellectualism, to ultimately try to overthrow the power of the living God and the knowledge of God from the hearts of men. That's pretty radical. I mean, look, I'm telling you right now, that's radical. I mean, we just have to take it and then just understand that there's the person revelation of an individual. But I mean, goodness, A. Allen had a walk with God and authority over demon spirits. I mean, that was just seen time and time again. But still, we take it, you know, we just take it and just say, well, okay, well, we can, can consider that. But I can see a whole lot of darkness and a whole lot of pride and a whole lot of arrogance and a whole lot of self-will and a whole lot of blindness of heart and mind working through that arena of things. So look here what the Lord says. For God had chosen foolish things of the world to confound the wise. God had chosen weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. 
Imagine that the Lord just says, okay, I'm going to give you an opportunity no matter who you are to be converted and to become this way. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give you an opportunity to, I'm going to take you from the Ivory Palace. Let's just, let's just pretend for a moment that that's who you are. Take you from the Ivory Palace of the person who knows more than anybody else, has more fame, more riches, and I'm going to give you an opportunity to be completely abased. <laughs> I'm going to give you an opportunity to be so converted that you'll be just like me. Jesus said, you come learn to me. I'm lowly. I'm meek and I'm lowly. I'm going to give you an opportunity to be converted and understand what it means to walk in the humility in which God inhabits and dwells. He, the heaven is his throne. The earth is fit stool. And the heavens of heaven cannot contain him. Shall you make a place for me to dwell? But this, this place will I look. To this place will I dwell. To this place will my desire be directed to the broken and to the contrite. Amen. Father, give an opportunity to leave the ranks of the prideful and the arrogant and, and, and the stiff-necked and the, and the, and the self-assured and the self-confident to come over here now to become weak in their own ability, unable in the context of everything that we have us. We have a that we consider ourselves to be able to do. Having begun in the Holy Ghost, having been taken from the ranks of men, transformed by the power of God, having begun in the Holy Ghost, you can only be made perfect or you can only mature and grow by the same Holy Ghost. Having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the human ability? Are you now made perfect by something that you're able to do, something you're able to strive to attain? No way. There's a dependency upon God that we have to have that is such a simple childlike faith that reduces it down to this. When I know that all I need to do is have a desire in my heart to do what He wants me to do and that He will take that desire then and that's all He needs to create the great miracles of his divine manifested will in my life. Just a desire. Just a desire. A desire that gets you up moving. A desire that is a passion. A desire that won't allow you to sit still. A desire that ultimately comes as a, a cry from your heart like it did in John Knox. Give me Scotland or I die. Our Father Nash, who had agonized all night in prayer for days on end, sometimes weeks on end, till breakthrough came in the spirit. Then Charles Finney would come into the town, and the whole place would be shaken by the power of God. We need, God, we need to let God raise up intercessors again. And the way we, somebody said, You mean we got to let God do it? Yeah. How do we let God do it? What do you mean? Uh, we're willing to participate. That's how we let God do it. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. In other words, you've got to participate. You've got to be willing, you gotta be willing to, to make these things important to yourself. And base things and things which are despised has God chosen. You're standing there, you're talking to somebody. Don't you know that Jesus Christ loves you so much? And Satan has turned that into such a mockery and you can feel the atmosphere moving against it. You can fear this. You can almost hear the slanderous accusations crying out foolish, despising such a ridiculous notion. But if you don't back down, if you know how to stay over here in this realm of glory where you're untouched by those voices, you're untouched by those threats, he will break off every yoke. God is just taking something so simple. He doesn't need the intellect of men to do some, you know, apologetic, some persuasive argument. He wants the power of the Holy Ghost to touch the heart of men. You heard me tell about how we were standing in Yanji and when we were in Yanji, a person from North Korea came over the bridge, 
we had received a day visa to come and buy some medication. He comes walking up to us and shows us his pen, Kim Sung Gil. You heard me tell that story. Well, Stone, who was translating for Brother Joshua the other night, he was my translator. He was there when I said, say everything that I say word for word now. And he saw things he never saw before in his four years of being on the mission field right there on the border. He watched as a man broke and began to sob a very a well-to-do affluent man who had the ability to get a visa to cross over into China, which is very difficult for any North Korean to be able to do in the first place. You've got to have connections. Begin to sob because I, told, I began to tell him, do you know his, how much Christ Jesus loves you? And I never even got Christ Jesus out. And he began to sob the authority, the power of that name. The, the authority and the power of that name is going to work right here just effectively in the United States of America if people can get out of their own reasoning and out of their own intellect and out of their own programs and out of their own ideas and get on their face and begin to cry out to God for a fresh fire from heaven, a fresh anointing of Holy Ghost conviction in their life. I'm so blessed by those of you who are going, going to, doing the crusades in the park. Don't stop. I don't know how big was the, I don't care how big it was. I know that things had gotten up to about 500 people in the park last year, and now it's, everything's turned towards just the children. Just keep at it, because the thing about it is it will bust open. It will break open. You just got to keep, you got to keep going after it. You got to keep, it's, you got to keep going. You yeah. keep hitting it. You keep declaring it. You do not weary in well-doing. People give up. Well, it ain't working out on, on the basis of, of, of what I have considered it should be. It isn't working out on the basis of what, you know, the numbers I think it should be, the volume I think it should be, the results I think it should be. No, 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 no. You stand and speak these words of life. You stand in total dependency upon God. You believe what he said. In, in total weakness and in inability in yourself, you stand there and do God, exactly what Father told us to do, go in all the world and preach the gospel beginning here in, in, in our own city in our own region and he's going to do the things that he's that he said to do it's all his words still surely come to pass don't look at yourself you look look at looking at jesus you never get discouraged look at yourself discouraged soon as you many people can't identify the realm of self they can't recognize the self i'm gonna give you some help as soon as you begin to dis get discouraged that self deny it in other words, refuse to have it influence you at all. Just turn and look at Jesus, the author, and finish your faith and get real excited about what it is he said. Amen. Amen. Mandam blend Jane de Bruja, Blange, Lang, Donkey Branda, Avla, she plucked it with her. Mam Blange, see, Tifrite. I pray that you will let God teach you how to give yourself to fasting and prayer, praying instead of continually buffeting your body. I pray that you give, I mean, you, you'll find out a mastery of your will. You'll find out a mastery of your will. It's because it's about the mastery of your will where you say, I'm no longer going to do my will, but the will of the Father. Yeah. Jesus said, the whole vi I come in the whole volume of the book. In other words, the whole, the whole message of the book, I've come in the whole message of the book to do thy will, O God. And that's exactly what we're supposed to be following Jesus to do. And the reality of it is people, many people have no mastery of their will whatsoever. Satan comes along with some little, some little frivolous lie, some little temporal pleasure that's going to bring death and damnation. And people don't know how to resist it. I'm telling you right now, just begin to stand up against the gnawing hunger pains. huh? And begin to just, just, go, just start fasting uh, without going without water and food for a while. You'll get mastery over your will. Hallelujah. Praise God. And Father is Father going to see that. And, be, and besides that, it has a good way of dealing also with doubt and unbelief. And if there's anything that people got to understand, is God's called us to begin to move out in a realm of faith that is, can only be, that is only possible when you have yourself totally dependent upon the Lord. 
Now that means I'm going to be totally weak within myself. I have no confidence. I have a vote of no confidence in me. Hallelujah. I have absolute confidence in, in God and I know God dwells in me. I don't have to look to myself. I can step out to conquer the world for Jesus Christ one step at a time. I don't have to know the beginning from the end. He's the beginning from the end and he's the only one who knows the beginning from the end. He's not telling anybody else. Everybody else has to walk it out one step at a time. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just a couple more verses of scripture. Oh, quick, quick. I'm, about to, I'm, I'm about to just let you turn your heart towards heaven. Get raptured. Get caught away. Just get caught away. You can get caught away right now, but you've got to listen to me. Hallelujah. He's put his words in your mouth. He's put his power and his authority in your life. Hallelujah. And when he has need of you, huh? he'll call for you. Meanwhile, be faithful. Meanwhile, be prepared unto every good work. Mean how, mean, mean, Meanwhile, learn how to end in do your hardness. I went into Mandarin there. Okay. Learn how to endure hardness as a good as a good as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I understand these trial these tri trials that come to try your faith are at, are actually a work of divine power and divine grace to establish you and strengthen you. And when you know it, then you can rejoice in all your tribulation. Because, you know, God's doing this work. People look along, look, and they say, oh, you despise. Oh, yeah, come on, bring it, bring it. Oh, you look like a small thing. Yeah, praise God, bring it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> because I'm going to tell you right now, you, I, you, are, you are confirming who I am. And you're confirming about where, where, where God is ultimately going to be found at work. Revealing those things that only he can do, and it won't be possible to give men the credit. It won't be possible. That's right. That's right. To say, this is something that man did. Because man can do great things. Mm -hmm. and man can do great things trusting in themselves. Look what Bill Gates did. We could, look what, we could go through all different kinds of people who've done great things in, in the financial world, the scientific world. We can go through a list of all different kinds of religions. Mm -hmm. Look what the Mormons have done. Mm -hmm. The Mormons, my goodness gracious. They were probably one of the biggest counterfeits. They're so close to the kingdom of God. All they got to do is renounce their heresy and our God fall on them. Huh? They're so close. They got Jesus' name. And look at what they've done without, without the power of God. Look at what they've done trusting in themselves. Huh? They own Coca-Cola. They own Bank of America. I mean, it goes on. They've got great wealth. They lend to many nations that do not borrow. They have more holdings than most, than the top corporations in the world. It's true. It's true. If you normalize it per capita, total number of people, they send more missionaries than the church. They send more missionaries. They have a greater retention of their harvest. They have less people that leave their church, their religion. Well, I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to not, not, not stand still and let that stand. No. I'm going to take a hold of God. Our purpose, is, our purpose is very clear here. We're not here to entertain anybody. We're not here to educate anybody. We're not here to impress anybody. We're here to call you into a place to where you can stand up and begin to fully live for God so that your generation will have a manifestation of who Jesus Christ really yeah. is and Amen. what his church is supposed to Amen. be. That's it. And God doesn't care if he saves by few or by many. And uh, my, my observation is that he's been very happy to save by few and by choice it's few. Yeah. Huh? Because he said, Gideon, said, there's, he said, Gideon, there's still too many people here. And what's going to happen at the end of the day, they're going to say that they did it by their own strength and they're going to have a hard time believing whether it was a miracle or not. Huh? She wasn't really dead. <laughs> if 
Father in the end is going to Father in the end is going to choose those that are vigilant. Vigilant. Be vigilant. Fear your adversary, the devil, goes about as a roaring lion. He's going to choose those who are vigilant. He say, I want you to choose those who are constantly watching. And they take their hand and they cup it and they bring the water up to their mouth. Those who choose those. There's going to be about 300 of them. <laughs> Father's recognizing he takes note of everybody who seeks him. There's a book of remembrance going on right now in this time of popular opinion, doing all these other things where we are under the pressure to bend or to bow, to go do it a different way, uh, to, to modify what God has said. And God's got a book of remembrance. He's, he knows 7,000 have not bowed their knee. He's got a book of remembrance of those who seek his face. He understands. Look, he understands. He's searching it out. And he's looking at you and he's saying, Are you, do you really want to do this? I love you, but do you really want to do this? Do you really want to stand over here with me? He is. And I'm just going to continue to say, yes, yes, yes. Hmm. 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 Father, do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Do this work right now. Lord, you're the one who can make the desert bloom, God. You, you're the one who makes the dry bones live, God. You're the one who makes the church shine bright. Do it now. Do it now, Lord. Do it now. Do it now, Father. Paul wasn't... Paul wasn't what people imagined him to be. The Apostle Paul. He wasn't popular. And people didn't like him. And if he came to the modern-day church... Most folks would leave. If he just came as an, any ordinary person, because most people just come as looky loos to hear and see the famous person. They don't come because they're hungry for God. They just come because of the excitement. There was an angel of darkness allowed to buffet, allowed to raise up a ruckus of accusation. That as soon as people saw Paul, they hated him. They wanted to kill him. And Paul was asking the Lord, please, Lord. He, Paul, knew what was, Paul knew what was going on. Though he could go with the signs and wonders and demonstration of the power of God so that the gospel was fully preached, this is what he had to deal with. And the Lord Jesus came to him after he was seeking the Lord to, to get rid of this angel of darkness who was follow him around. What did the Lord Jesus say? He said, my grace is sufficient for you. No, I'm not going to remove the angel of darkness. I'm not going to let you get puffed up. I'm not, going to, I'm not going to let you do it your own, go your own way. I don't know what all the dynamics was going on. But I do know what Jesus was saying and ultimately bringing down to this. He says, my strength's made perfect in your weakness. Uh, my, my, my strength is made perfect in your total dependence, of, dependency upon me. Huh? You got to come run right back over here to me because as soon as you plant the church, they don't like you no more. They done with you. Huh? Anybody want to live like that? I, I want to live like that. I'm going to live like that. I, I, I'm going to be, I'm going to be the adversary of hell. Huh? Not the adversary of it. I'm not going to agree with it in any way. We're going to go out against every power of darkness, the strength of the Lord and the power of, might, the power of his might. We're going to spoil everything that Satan is doing. We're going to deliver those who are held under his 
bondage and under his power. And we're going to, we're going to, we're going to seek the Lord tell. Father rains down this divine outpouring of his grace upon this city, upon this region. I tell the Lord, I told the Lord some several things. I said, Lord, I'll go, you know, I'll go to, I'll go to Kashmir for you, you know that? I'll go anywhere. I'll go, I'll go to North Korea, uh, wherever. Benghazi, Libya. But you have to do it here. 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 Do it here, Father. Truly, there are people here that can be saved. I've never been in San Francisco till the other night. I was in San Francisco. We went and checked into the hotel. We laid down in the hotel. We wanted to leave as soon as we got there. I've never been in a place like that. I never felt such the weight of sin and iniquity. I've never been in a place like that. Never. It wasn't long. We down, they were having a, started having a protest right out in the street. Gay rights, gay rights. They were screaming. We were on the 17th floor. And we're hearing these people screaming, just fighting. Lord, can this place live? Lord, can L.A. live? Lord, can San Diego live? Can Southern California live again? You've done great moves. There's been great moves of your spirit here. Can it live again? And the Lord has filled our mouth with faith. He's filled our mouth with confidence. He's filled our mouth with boldness. He's filled our mouth with grace. He's filled our mouth with life. He says, speak, scream at the mountain. Grace, grace, grace. Scream at the mountain again. Grace, grace, grace. Subdue those armies of hell. How do I do it? Be strong in the strength of the Lord, power of his might. What does that look like? Pentecost. A prayer meeting. You got to be kidding me. A prayer meeting? What will a prayer meeting do? It changes the atmosphere, puts the armies of the aliens to flight when it's a prayer of faith. God takes foolish things. A petitioning prayer of someone who stands on God's side, speaking out, as it were, into the unseen realm. Father hearing it from heaven. And it working a work that, once again, you can't even begin to put it into words or imagine it. Our time is too consumed with other things. We're going to have to let God reevaluate what it is we're doing with our life. We're going to have to let the floodlight of heaven shine upon our soul. We're going to have to look at the investment of our interest on a daily basis and find out how much of it is being deposited into the bank account of heaven, how much we're really living for the kingdom versus how much we're really living for ourselves. Are we denying ourselves or are we literally serving ourselves? Are we losing our life or are we giving our whole time investment, investment to the preservation of our own selfish life? Not the life. Not his life, our life. It needs to be a reevaluation. Great things about to happen. Great things. I was listening to my son do his recital the other night for his doctorate's degree up at UC Santa Cruz. And he has, he had that about, I, was, I guess it was about 15 part harmony going and He had this four-string quartet of violins going and these different things. Just amazing music that he had to show every possible skill set within the definition of how you create mood and atmosphere with music in order to get his doctorate, you know. So it's got different movements. But always there's that life of the anointing sparking in there. Sparking in there. I'm standing there looking at and seeing a dream I had a long time ago of having 
those who are so skilled in music and so given to music under the, con the, the conductor of the Holy Ghost revealing the most glorious heavenly sounds that mortal ear has ever heard as a revival that is greater than any revival that has ever taken place begins to unfold. I live for this every day. For some of you have been around me for a long time. My wife's seriously been around me for over 30 years. I've always talked like this. I've always talked like this. I didn't start talking like this last week or last revival or whatever. This is what I was born with. It's in my DNA. It's just as much a part of my thinking as anything else. He, the professor that oversees his doctorate, she walks up to me and she says, your son is amazingly gifted. And she, and she said, we're very proud of him. And my response is, clearly, we're proud of him as well. This is the work of the Holy Ghost. This is a divine act of grace. He was born. He was born for revival. We prayed. We cried out to God. Father, bring from our loins, O oh God, those that will shake the nations of this earth. Oh, that we can get God's people to praying and to interceding. And they don't live for any other reason than for his name to be glorified in the earth, for Jesus to be revealed to all men for who he really is, that all men could see how wonderful it is to live in the presence of God because the only alternative is to live in the presence of a, of a, of a terrible tyrant. There's no neutral ground. And we look at people under the slavery and mastery of the one who hates them, mm -hmm. who's determined to destroy that soul in eternity without God in a place called hell. And they've never known the beauty of what it's like to live in the presence of the living God. I'm determined to break the yoke of Buddhism. Amen. I'm determined to crush every god of the Hindus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Huh. All 33 million of them. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's so many you gotta lose you lose track quickly. Hallelujah. Every influence of all of those demon powers that spewed out. Through the life of Nimrod. Yeah, all the world would be turned to worship Satan. But there's a great harvest down yeah. between here and then. One day the Spirit of the Lord was talking to me. The Lord said, You want me to tell you when I'm going to come? I said, No. Quote a scripture. The Spirit of the Lord said, You want me to tell you when I'm going to come? I was quiet because I knew it was the voice of the Lord. Third time. Do you want me to tell you when I'm going to come? I said, yes, Lord, I want to know when you're going to come. The Lord told me when he was going to come. And people go, oh, the radars come out, you know. I don't blame you. You shouldn't. The Lord told me when he's going to come. You know what he said? When there's no more harvest. When there's no more harvest. I saw Joel's army. Fire of God burned before them. And though it was as a garden of Eden, the fire began to burn up everything to where that there was nothing but as a, though it were a desolate wilderness behind, for even the gleaning was taken, a great harvest, a great outpouring yeah. of God, a great bringing in of the masses, of the millions, of the, of, the, of the billions that have not yet heard the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. This gospel of the kingdom, the same when Jesus preached, should be preached as a witness to all nations, then the end shall come. Ultimately, there's going to be a great falling away after this great moving of God. A great falling away. That's the way it works. God in his love calls in the people he shows in his great mercy. He calls all to come, those who are near and those who are far away. He heals them. And then they, through this process of decision making, begin to make wrong choices. I've watched it all my life. I've watched a lot of people fall away. I know people who wrote great songs in the church, knew them personally, ended up dying in this sin, 
dying in their iniquity. Total apostate. Watch what we watched it. We watched it. We watched it go on. People make choices. Tonight we pray in Jesus' name that you will value your soul and the, that you will price the value of your soul as high as you possibly can tonight. That the value of your soul will be to live the life of Jesus yeah. Christ. Amen. The value of your soul will be to live under the governorship of the living God that now you will make this world, you will make the demonic forces of hell that are manifested in this world your, your sworn enemy. Amen. You'll, go over, uh, you'll go everywhere destroying the works of the devil. Hallelujah. You go everywhere casting out devils. Huh? When temptation comes, you know exactly what it is. You mark that foul spirit of hell trying to overthrow your authority in Christ Jesus. You mark the thing. You rise up in the strength of the Lord and the power of His might. It's, these are the days that God would raise up mighty men once again, as He's always done in the times of revival. Hallelujah. David brought to pass a great revival. And then that, that great revival, hallelujah, the great revival that ultimately allowed Israel to step into the fullness of their inheritance. God raised up mighty men around him, men that could not die or fall in battle. Not one, not one, not one, not one, save one. Uriah the Hittite, and David killed him. Only Uriah the Hittite. And that was the innocent blood upon, upon David's hands that he could not build the temple afterwards. But no mighty men, no, no enemy could kill or destroy any of the mighty men that God anointed to stand in that great day of revival. So it has been over the course of time, the course of history even in the church. And Father's preparing even now for people who know their God do great exploits. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. A people who have total authority, strong young men who the word of God abides in them and they've overcome or conquered the wicked one. Sin has no power over them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To show a whole new realm of glory. Yeah. Yeah. Prophets have prophesied it. Evangelists have declared it. Catherine Kuhlman, uh, I can go on the, I can go all the way back to rec through recorded history of the church. I see a day when there will be no sickness in the house of God, no sin among his people. Hallelujah. Once again. Yes. Amen. This is why Father, this is Father's will. We live for do His will. Amen. To do Thy will, O God. Will you let the Spirit of the Lord so impact your heart that this becomes a, a burden on the inside where you give yourself to it. You begin to cry out to God day and night. You become one like the, like the widow of Luke chapter 18. This is why men ought to always pray and not to faint. Because your petition is going to be heard and it's going to be, you, your desire is going to be granted. Uh, uh, if an unrighteous judge who fears not, who regardeth not man nor fear of God is going to give, grant the petition of someone who continually comes, how much more is a righteous God who loves men dearly going to grant the petition? Yes. Reinhardt just recently started doing crusades in America, he's got a vision that the same kind of impact, the same massive crowds will gather once again in the United States of America as, as we saw them in times past and as they took place even in Africa. I mean, I was in Reinhardt's meetings. I was in the crowd of estimated 800,000 people and who knows if it was 800,000 or 1.2 million. I mean, there's a margin of error, come on. All I know is Rodney and I walked all the way to the very back of the crowd because we wanted to see how many people are out there. So we went on a grand adventure. And so we went, we were the, we were the only two white people in <laughs> this backwoods place of Nigeria. And we got all the way back to the back and Reinhardt was a little dot up there on the platform. And his voice was sounding out. The power of God was moving. <laughs> And when I walked all the way back up to the platform, and just the same, same anointing, same glory, just the gifting of God, a grace, a moving of God. Father says, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to anoint you to do it, Reinhardt. And now Reinhardt feels like the Lord's saying, okay, run, run, with these, run with these crusades. Start going for these crusades in the United States of America. He's not the only one. Men of God are feeling this moving, this rumbling. 
Rodney's going to go to Washington, D.C. He's calling people to come to Washington, D.C. for a Holy Ghost meeting. I mean, I, and there's so many, so many of my friends, so many wonderful, mighty men of God that the Lord has allowed us to stand in the company with. See, I love the anointing, you see. Therefore, anytime I see the anointing on anybody, I love them. People have all kinds of problems with this one and that one. I love them because I love the anointing. Everywhere I see the anointing, I love it. If God's going to honor them, boy, am I going to honor them. You know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got done with criticism. When I found out God hated it, I stopped it. Hallelujah. Pointing to the finger and accusation has no place in my life. Uh, they, they, if they got a problem, it's Father's problem. I'm not mine. It's not my department. Amen. My department is to bless and not to curse, and so is yours. And you get into this department, you get doing your job, you're going to find yourself a great reward for doing what you're supposed to do. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to come. I want you to come to this place of yieldedness in God as you seek His face. If you'll come to this place of yieldedness, if you, through seeking Him, you'll become yielded in His presence, you'll have an encounter with God, and then you're going to say, send me. He's going to be passionate. Who will go for us? He's seeing all these things going on in heaven. Who will go for us? I'll go. Send me. Once you get past your condemnation, once you get past the problems and the issues and the failure and all the other stuff. I need to see what great things Father's willing to do, wants to do. How did he get, if I want to value my soul, how shall I value it? What price shall I put upon it? How do I begin going about the appraisal? I can only look and see what God did when he valued me. When he valued my soul and he put a price upon me. He valued me with his own life. He priced me at the cost of his only begotten son. I only pray, I ask God, let me have an anointing so strong that when I say that, everyone will be able to understand that and experience that and be slain by it and be compelled by the love of God to go everywhere declare this good news of what Christ Jesus did for us Father we pray in the name of Jesus that as we approach this time and season where we celebrate the greatest event that ever took place in the history of your work of creation. The resurrection of your only begotten Son from the dead. The first fruits of the resurrection. The life of the resurrection. Father, that we would find ourselves at the moment in precipices of a great shaking. Lord, that you'll shake this earth. Yes. Shake it once again, God. Take every heart and every life in this place that is willing to totally trust you and turn their heart and their face towards you. Those, O oh Lord, who of themselves would be weak and be nothing, but in you, O oh God, will be confident and bold and have the strength that only you can supply who will stand up in your stead. Not only commanding the wind and the waves and the dead to raise a life again, but even more importantly, being able to see you work, hear you speak, interact with you, Lord, in such a way that all men would be able to take note and recognize that we stood in the presence of the Lord that we've been taught of God. Father, we know that you purposed even to provoke the nation of Israel with the glory that you would manifest in the midst of your church. Right now, Lord, they look on us as idolaters, those who do not even know you. Bob, they have many proofs and evidence to believe such a thing. 
But Lord, they know, they've read about, they've quantitated, they've qualified your glory and the working of your mighty power. Father, we pray, oh God, that your glory and that beauty and that splendor of Jesus Christ will be made manifest in the midst of your church once again. Oh God, that your people will arise to the occasion. They will arise to the call. They'll stop playing any games with sin messing around the camp of Satan and begin to serve you only, oh God. To serve you only, to serve you wholly. Father, we thank you that you brought Deborah here to us today. Father, we thank you that you've given us yet another partner in Asia. We thank you for all these great doors and opportunities that you've opened to us in Asia and Middle East, the nations of the earth. God, there's so many, there's so many things that you've done. Father, we do not want to fail at this divine opportunity that you've given to us. For, Lord, truly we know and see that so many have been given opportunities and they didn't value it for what it was. They didn't recognize the day of their visitation. They recognized that you had given them an option. Well, Lord, may not a person in this place make such a mistake. May everyone here tonight understand that you've personally called them by name chosen them, purposed them to do great and mighty things. I want everybody, please, I want you to stand with me. So long, so long, Rede Kadila Lamana Vestilla. La Mongli Stiterania Shalododam Tietalara Nietala. Who's here with any disease in their body? Who's here with any, anyone, did anyone come here tonight with any disease in your body? What's wrong with you? Come here. I mean, I saw the anointing on you earlier. And then the Lord was touching your body. What's wrong with you? Huh? I have blood you have a blood infection. What kind of blood infection? I don't know yet. You don't know? Just checking. I'm a doctor. Okay. Um, you're not, you're not, you're, and I'm telling you, you don't have a blood infection. I'm gonna give you a new diagnosis here tonight. Okay. We were in a meeting, and we were in a meeting. It was really it was a meeting just like in the days of Jesus. And somebody came and said, is there a doctor in your group? I said, I'm a doctor. So there's a person in a coma. They believe that she's heat stroke, heat stroke. I said, well, I'll come, I'll come. And I know they might have expected me to pull out the stethoscope. <laughs> All I did is I said, hey, sweetie, wake up. She woke up. Everybody's like, wow, the doc's really in the house. <laughs> Truly. See, we, we, of ourselves, we can do nothing. But by Christ Jesus, we do everything. Yes. I'm not ashamed of his words. I'm not ashamed of what he's called me to do. Neither should you be. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, this blood infection, whatever was wrong with your body, it goes out of your body in Jesus' name. I command you to be healed in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, from the ground of your head to the soles of your feet, God tell you, you healed. See, the woman with the issue of blood, she ran out of alternatives. Her health insurance expired. <laughs> she spent all of that she had and grew all the, but grew the worse. 
she said within himself, if I can but touch him, he's here right now. His presence is here. Now you have to believe these things that I'm telling you. I want you to just lift your hands towards heaven and I want you to let the Holy Spirit convince you. Just lift your hands towards heaven. We want you to go out of here tonight convinced. Yes. What is your name? Leslie. Hmm? Leslie. Leslie. <laughs> Leslie. Jesus Christ makes you whole. <laughs> Jesus Christ fills you up. Yes. If you've lost your passion for the kingdom of God, get it back right now. If you've lost a vision and a purpose to do, to live for the will of the Father and know the will of the Father alone, alone, get it back right now. If you've grown cold or lukewarm, right now in Jesus' mighty name, let the fire of God burn in your heart so much so that you, it's hard for you to go to sleep. And when you wake up, the first thing, you, as soon as your feet hit the floor, you're crying out to God, send me, God, use yes. me, Lord. I'll go for you. I'll go for you. I'll go for you. Glory in, come here. I want you to come with your mother. Come. Emily, I want you to come over here. Stand here with Glorian. Listen to me. <laughs> Satan has no right to afflict your body. <laughs> Satan has no right to afflict your body. <laughs> You're the daughter of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus walked into a meeting one day and he says, should, should not this woman who's been afflicted for, by Satan these many years be delivered on the Sabbath day? See, this, that she is a daughter of the Lord, a child of the covenant. <laughs> Satan comes and tries to impose things upon us that he has no right to do, and we go ahead and give him permission. We go ahead and say, we, we go ahead and confess it. Now you today, this, 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 this yoke of affliction on your house, upon your life, this torment upon your house and upon your life. This, this, this mixture has got to stop now. Okay? This thing that the enemy has tried to do, placed upon you, he has no right to do it. No more. Just let your hands towards heaven, Diana. I know that you've, all of you love Jesus so very much. And I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna see Glorian get touched by heaven and get, get, you know, delivered and healed and then ultimately come back under that affliction. I'm not gonna watch it happen with Emily. I'm not gonna watch it happen with you, Diane. Now we're gonna come into agreement tonight, tonight and then the joke is going to be broken in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. 
our this is where one of the realms of our first battles, things going on in our life. Then the Lord once we, then then the Lord shows us that we have grace and ability to deal with these things, and He promotes us to go deal with other people's lives and ultimately to the nations. See nations healed. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mandek di kata, mandek di spotan, mokstan exte, lupakta. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Help her. I know it's hard to stand up in this place. Brad, I want you and Sandra to come here. Lazo Langaya Jibidi and Zalopanya. Mala no siya de ikaya e ha sisa sa. It's the transfer to heaven. Father. Father. Silaim Dai. You fire. You fire. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Grab your hand. Grab your grandma holding hands here. I see heaven, you see. I know what you see, but I see heaven. I see the call of God. Thank you. Just thank you. South Africa, come here. Father, thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost in this life. Father, right now in Jesus' my name. Sierra. In that was a pain. If that is to turn on my day, yes, to turn in a make it. Yes, to turn in a make you say. 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 Yes, to turn Divine ability to do what God's called you to do. Hallelujah. 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 Say a Quran. Hallelujah. Merisuteli man lay. Hallelujah. Rusha tai. Helamende. Eristuya tai. Malana negiriti. Hiritita. Yep. Ivresatu ye kanaka. Sika no katoki ne kalaka. Akstakola kiba kina nakasala tai. Hale my shekote. Come here, KC. Come here. Uh, Jason, come here. Come over here. Zalamonda Dairi. Malangalea Taya. Malananga Day. Monga Jay Resita. Yep. You listen to me. That faith that the Lord Jesus Christ put upon you to go anywhere in any nation of the earth, I'm telling you right now, it, forget about it being over because it ain't already even got started. My goodness gracious. God ain't even getting started you trying to worry about it being over. Mine. Come. So to my, so to my, so to my tomato, Muslim bataya, Niku the Mongre, Nia Shalapando, ye cara me. Mean don't jail a man and later hold a step. Mong jail a mine, long the day. Hallelujah. Ha, baby, come quickly. Ha, 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 I was in Papua New Guinea doing a crusade. I get this cryptic message from KC. Our contacts didn't meet us at the, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the train station. They were in Romania somewhere. We're going in anyways. Look, I'm telling you right now, they're going in anyways. <laughs> All the things say you can't, you're going in anyway. <laughs> Nobody here to meet us. We're going in anyway. 
He was saying, we can't do it. Satan threatens and say it's over. We're going in anyway. You think the father's going to, that's precious faith. You think that's just going to die and become nothing and useless and valueless in the kingdom of God? Satan, you are a liar. You listen to me. You leave these people of the Lord alone. You don't mess with them no more. You foul spirit of hell. I'm done with you messing with them now. I destroy you work. I crush your power. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Just get ready. Get ready. Get ready. I'm going to tell you, KC, I, I, I called you up on that platform in Nepal in 2008 in Kawasuti. Because the Spirit of the Lord told me you were going to do the same thing. The Spirit of the Lord told me, that's why I called you up on the platform to talk, speak. You think it's over just because you're pregnant? <laughs> you think it's over just because it didn't, all the details didn't work out like you thought? My goodness, God had a better idea. You're just going to have to get used to God having better ideas than you. He's going to have to get comfortable with that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha ha. Say us, we are. Say it. No, no, yeah. You say you know, my guy, last day. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, a great moving of the power of God, the Holy Ghost, sweeps across San Diego, California. I'm telling you right now, I walk in that door right there. If I walk in that door right there and I walk out into that big building, that's 34,000 square feet right behind us. Every time I do, I feel the anointing and I see God filling the whole place up. Amen. Now I'm telling you, God, I'm telling you, listen to me. I'm not talking about with some kind of religious program. I'm talking about an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I'm talking about a rushing mighty wind. I'm talking about a, a sound of an abundance of rain where men's hearts are captivated by the power of God and the Holy Ghost conviction falls upon the lives and the souls of those who seemed absolutely distant and estranged and unaffected by anything that belonged to God. Suddenly transformed. Suddenly transformed. Captivated by the Spirit of the Lord. This is how we pray. We don't have to try to think of things to pray. God is the Holy Ghost who's taken hold of us with a fire and a passion that burns on the inside of us. Oh God! We, this, this sound of heaven comes crying out of our voice. Father God, the sounds of men in the city, the churches, oh God, that are darkened by the powers of Satan that are under the influence of unholy deceptions, oh God, send your fire now, send your power and save, oh God, those who've never heard, those who've never seen, those who've never known the ways of life, let their eyes be open. Let their hearts now see, oh God. Let them understand the goodness of the Lord. Oh, Father, we pray in Jesus' name that there will be a church that will lift up their voice and begin to cry out to you who be heard in heaven so that the earth may be changed. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Say you put my name. Say you put the money. You might as well understand. Discouragement is a force. A Satan that's come out against you, a strategy that Satan will use to try to stop you. Condemnation, self-interest, self-preservation, your own ideas. You're gonna have to understand it. You're gonna have to mark it as the enemy and begin to stand up against the thing. Say, we shall do valiantly. First the Lord, our God, who goes before us to subdue all our enemies. Hallelujah. I am weak, but he's strong. Of myself, I can do nothing. 
<laughs> but through Christ Jesus, I can do all things because he strengthens me with the ability to do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray that this, that prayer, the spirit of prayer, petitioning and supplication with all praying in the Holy Ghost will grab a hold of you and you'll be given to give place to this activity of the Holy Ghost. It may seem foolish. It may be seeming like a small thing, but it's the power of God that changes a culture and a generation and a nation. I pray that you'll give yourself to being strengthened and being built up by the Spirit of the living God. As you just, just begin to read the Word. Let the Word of God dwell in you. You don't have time not to have time for the things of the Word and the things of the Spirit. You don't have time to neglect these things. Ah, can't afford it. Thank you, Jesus. I believe that this year is a very critical year. 2014 is a very critical year. And I'm, I, I am petitioning you to stand with me, crying out to God through prayer and fasting. That this great and mighty moving of the Holy Ghost, that these things that only God can do, will begin to take place in this year. And I believe they will. I believe they will. I mean, we have 78,000 square foot of building. And as much parking space as you need for that. I mean, this is like not an accident. Okay. Somebody said, like, that's an $18 million property, right? Yeah. How much did you move on for? I said, nothing. We gave something later. Ten thousand, about ten thousand dollars. <laughs> it's just a miracle, you know. It's just a miracle. Basically, say, well, what do you need, right? Pretty much. This is what the Lord did. This is what the Lord is doing. He shows us, He shows us His tokens and the signs all the time. Faith is bigger than money. Faith is far bigger than money. Faith is far bigger than money. I said, faith is far bigger than money. <laughs> yeah, and it's, and that, yeah, and it's producing fruit right there. I can hear the fruit of that, of, of, of that reality. And it's yours. I tell you, those things are yours. That's faith. That gift of faith is yours. You get this faith. I, Sandra, I told you, the gift of faith is yours. Now just do it. Father, I thank you for increasing the gift of faith in your daughter Deborah's life for the things that you purposed for her to build. Because I see it being, I see it being huge. I saw it being huge when you first told me about what God was doing. I saw, I saw it being big. In fact, when Pastor Parks was telling me, I felt it really big. I felt it, I felt it, I felt it touching Asia, all of Asia. I mean, I know you're doing stuff in Africa too, but all of Asia. I mean, I have a special, I have a special interest in Asia and the Middle East. All of Asia. It did, did everything that you step out to do and everything that you say to do, and you, you vowed yourself and consecrated yourself to the Lord, and the Lord answered you 
with his signs and wonders and with his tokens of grace, the things that he did as you, just, as you testified to us earlier. I mean, I tell you, and those are the beginning works. Those are the, those are the things that just jump-started the program, those mighty signs and wonders. What should it be like in the end? It should, it should be far greater because the nation can be saved in a day. Yes. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the special anointing that you put on your daughter. Hallelujah. The ability to prophesy to nations. The ability to stand in your stead and speak your word and declare it as, as, as you've purposed in your heart for it to be and it come to pass. To be bold enough to believe, oh God, to be simple enough to believe, to be certain enough to believe that when she opens her mouth and speaks, she's not speaking of herself and of her own will, but she's speaking right out of that realm of your own heart and mind and spirit. In Jesus' name, greater than ever before. In Jesus' name, greater than ever before. In the mighty name of the living God, greater than ever before, Deborah. Oh. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Faith to build. Faith in Jesus' name. Faith to lay hold of wealth, finances, of human resources. Faith. 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 Divine provision. You know, the Lord has given us a great company. We have these great alliances that stretch literally all over the earth right now. The alliance. Yeah. The holy alliance of the people of faith. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sweeping Angola right now. Overland's mission, Phyllis Smithers. The alliance. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, God's raising up special ministries and missionaries right now. Brother Joshua, literally over a house church of millions, tens of millions. That, that, that expression of back to Jerusalem, sending more missionaries to the unreached people groups out of China than any of the network. I mean, the alliance. The alliance for the people of faith. Hallelujah. The alliance. The alliance. Christ for the nations. Korea. The alliance for the people of faith. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Rasta, the month, the list of everything. Hallelujah. The River Ministry International. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Alliance of the people of faith. Hallelujah. <laughs> I forgot how many Rodney told me he's gone through the Bible school since he started it. It's just a huge number. Of people that are going all over the nations of the earth. The Alliance. Hallelujah. 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 These are the best, this is the best possibility in the time frame of the plan of God to be alive. Amen. I know it's hard. I know there's great opposition. Ah, well, I'm going to tell you, the help is far superior. Amen. And those that are with us are far more than they're with them. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I, I'm pretty sure Deborah is going to be here on Tuesday night to speak to the School of Missions. So you, you want to come? This missionary has got something to say, something to give. She told me tonight when she came, she said, oh, no, no, I'll just wait and speak to the School of Missions on Tuesday. Well, I said, you need to go ahead and say something now, too. <laughs> so those of you, all of our... And then there's people here tonight that aren't here tonight that also are involved in school of missions. Then make sure the word gets out, people know. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Aha. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. I just want everybody to know God's left nobody out. He's called everyone. I tell you right now, his eyes go to and fro, looking for, through the earth, looking for someone who might show himself mighty on their behalf, and he's not picky. He's looking for anyone. And all you got to do is say, right here, Lord. Right here. 
Right here. Right here. Somebody said, well, he can't use me. Oh, yeah, he can. Because he did, he did put something on you better than a coal of fire. He put the blood of Jesus on you. Now, Mom, right here. Right here. Mom, right right here. Oh, yeah. Right here. Hallelujah. 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 Kosa karamanda siti yataya. Hallelujah. Rosa paka dasati. Sio tu yala mamania. Sio tu yala mamania. I want you to just, once again, I want to say this. Believe with me. I mean, believe with me that in this event that people call Easter, Easter that we know as Resurrection Sunday, believe with me that Christ Jesus will be honored and glorified like never before. That suddenly it just won't be, all of a sudden it won't just be a holiday, it won't be an iconic thing, but something is going to happen so significant. I can think of a better, no better time than the day of resurrection, than Resurrection Sunday for a great revival to begin, a great outpouring of God. I can think of no greater time, no more perfect time for a father to be able to glorify his son in the, in the, in the eyes of men. Suddenly they begin to understand a little bit more, in fact, a whole lot more than what they've ever equated to Easter. Oh, Jesus' name. Take hold of this with me. Begin to believe. Begin to believe God. Begin to believe God in a bigger way. Begin to believe God in a bigger way. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, living God. Lamma mora mamma ne nende ti sto tolo la nakati ero to. Here is Tara Nicole come here. Here is to JJ come stand with Nicole come here. So let your hands towards heaven. Father, thank you for lighting a fire of passion and truth and faith. In the name of Jesus, a Holy Ghost connection. A Holy Ghost connection with heaven. Suddenly all these things become real. The passion of it and the glory of it. The reality of it takes hold of our soul and mind and thinking. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus, for the fire of the Holy Ghost burning. Now, in Jesus' name. Now, in Jesus' name. Don't be silent. Lift up your voice and begin to cry out to God, saying, Lord, I want to know you. Father, I've got to know you. Lord, reveal yourself to me. Get passionate with me.
get passionate with Him. Begin to cry on Him. You watch what God will do. Yes. <laughs> Fire, 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 I can't do it without you, Lord. Yes, Lord. I can't do it without you, 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 Lord. I can't do Man blange co car die ik tai mange mange lange blong jaggi gaman ba jeko man man ban jek jeto mange le ala nein do to stai meto mary bande esho kaya esho kine me nein do die ire be pe itea now now mange lando now mange lando mange ko ye my ye o she main da ipaya Monday, Ilikara, Ikalera, yeah. Bella, no, Monday. You're going to leave here completely different tonight. Believe me. Thank you, Lord. Malangeo, Ishe Baye, Deya. Thank you, Lord, by your spirit. Isu Zana, Isu Damani, Iti Alo. Isu Jalamani, Iti Alo. Iti Alo. Iti Alo. Iti lo, iti lo, iti lo, iti la masaya eli ala lokutaya. Isi zanu na iti li, isu zana ani, isu jeni iti karana arada aradi ala 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 ani ala 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 ani ala 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 Ali adola nani se ese dusha. Ila basada adi ala lama adala edi geta kalo. Thank you Lord. Ija lama ndara de ese tani ala. Thank you Lord for boldness. Now, 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 Here it is. Everything's different now. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we want you to prepare an offering for the Lord. Prepare an offering for the Lord. Especially the offering of your own life. And then go ahead and write a check that kind of is within the realm of the same sacrifice and commitment. <laughs> because the Lord's going to move on the offering. It's the offering of your heart, the offering of your life, whatever the offering is. 
If it's an offering in truth, if it's an offering in righteousness, Father's going to move on the offering. He's going to send his fire on the offering. He's going to send his blessing on the offering. Now, obviously, I'm not just talking about mo money, finances. I'm talking about every dimension of the offering. All, all that finances and money could possibly be is a token of where your heart's at. That's all. Because I'm more interested in the heart, but we know that the Lord connects the offering with it. And besides that, he's also going to work a miracle through, the, through your giving, through the offering of your giving. He's going to work a miracle for you so that more finances can come into the kingdom of God through your life. And that's all going to happen in the realms of faith. That's not going to happen because all of a sudden you're going to have some great business idea. I mean, I mean I'm not going to put that out of the category of what God can do because he can do anything. But the Lord always does supernatural provisions. He always brings us into all that he has for us through his supernatural work of grace. When the Lord brought Israel into their promise, into the inheritance, he worked a miracle. And the Jordan stood up, piled up to the heavens, stacked up. It didn't flow from the Sea of Galilee anymore down to the Dead Sea. It, went, it flowed from the Sea of Galilee up to heaven. Miracles. Miracle provision. Miracle provision. It happens through an activity of the gift of faith. That as we begin to give the offering of our life and as we begin to sow those things of our life, including our finances into this realm, faith begins by the Spirit of the Lord to explode in our life because God takes the smallest acts of obedience and produces the greatest miracles of faith through them. True. Smallest acts of obedience, beginning with our salvation. Hallelujah. Soko mangalika beras tapaya. Loda dada day Mang leshi paura namba day, mam lam be day bru sam langeta, mam lang jay bru naya, se brain gala mang je se fritikaya. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I speak life and encouragement and strength to you in Jesus' name. Allah mang lek tau ya fratataya, is do pai la man the most a pai, a passion for reality in God, not for more of religion, a passion for reality of God reality of God that can only be manifested by Jesus Christ. Yes, Him alone. Yes, Jesus. Yeah, in Jesus' name, I break off every yoke. I break the power and the influence of every mind, blind, and spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I command you to be blessed. So if you haven't already, you just worship the Lord with your offering, your giving. Find a bunch of people around you, hug them. Tell them that you love them.